Members of Council, if I can please have you take your seats. Okay, this meeting is now resumed. Members, please. Thank you. Members, we have a presentation uh, this morning to recognize the Toronto Wolfpack on the recent championship. I would like to call upon Mayor Tory to come forward for the presentation. Well, Madam Speaker, thank you, and good morning uh, to members of Council, and good morning to uh, the Wolfpack uh, group that are here this morning, and I will uh, introduce them. Uh, Josh McCrone, Captain, if you could each stand as, uh, as I introduce you so people can make sure to recognize Bob Bestwick, who's one of our players, Blake Wallace, also a player, Paul Rowley, the head coach, Simon Finnegan, assistant coach, Kurt Haggerty, assistant coach, and last but not least, uh, Rennie Metua, who's the rugby operations manager. And, you know, I'll tell you a story, because really the story starts with Councillor Jay Robinson. And uh, Jay, if you want to come up here, uh, Councillor, um, she um, said to me way back when, I guess it has to be at least two years ago, uh, that there was this group that were forming up uh, a, a rugby team for Toronto. And I'm sort of thinking, well, what, in what league are they going to play? And she then told me the next unlikely thing, which is they were actually going to be a Toronto-based team playing in a league that was by and large across the pond, uh, with most of the games being played in England. And I'm beginning to think, well, this sounds even more unlikely. And I said, <laughs> where are they going to play their games in Toronto? And then they said, Lamport Stadium. And as much as we're proud to own it, and it's the host to uh, a lot of the Caribbean Carnival events and so on, I thought to myself, well, you know, that's a pretty big stadium for a team that's never been heard of and so forth and so on. But lo and behold, uh, the people um, who were there that day at the press conference, Jay convinced me to go to the press conference to announce the formation of this team. And I was even that day thinking, well, this still seems pretty unlikely. And are they going to sell the tickets? And they were very full of uh, enthusiasm and energy that day because um, in, in previous rugby games, uh, probably instigated by our friend uh, Mike Williams over here, there actually had been not a bad turnout at some of the different things that were Canadian Championship games and so forth. But to have a professional team that had to charge, you know, uh, admission prices to cover their costs, it just seemed unlikely. Well, um, I will just tell you before we skip to their record of accomplishment that I've gone to some of the games and it is a crowd more like a Toronto FC crowd. It's just people having immense amounts of fun, mostly younger people. Um, it's a whole different scene and it brings that stadium to life and it uh, underlines to me the need for us at some point in time to make the decision to invest properly in that place because there are uses uh, to which that can be put in that uh, part of town. Uh, but the bottom line is regardless of where they played, um, they played well and uh, an unlikely uh, situation turned into another championship team uh, for Toronto. And in the rugby world, and I didn't understand much of this myself, but winning the championship where you are promotes you to the next league up, so it's not the ultimate aspiration, but it sure was a great start. And it, it sort of cemented this thing. In fact, I will tell you that I kidded the mayor of Edmonton recently when, when we were at one of the big city mayor's meetings because they said they'd taken their sign that said, Welcome to Edmonton, City of Champions, and put it in storage. And I told them, well, perhaps we could, you, could, you could loan it to us or give it to us, and we could just <laughs> simply change the name and put it up here because, of course, we've had such... Uh, you know, success with much more to come. So last year, the Wolfpack won the Rugby Football League League One Leader Shield and the RFL League One title, and that earned them a promotion. So this year, uh, the team was promoted to the Betfred Championship, which is a higher league where they earned the Championship Leader Shield by defeating the Sheffield Eagles 68 to four. A real squeaker, a real squeaker there. They squeak out a win 68 to 4 at Lamport Field on July the 7th, and this is the team's third trophy in two seasons of existence. And they've earned a spot in the postseason Super 8 qualifiers, and they'll be competing for another league promotion into the RFL Super League, which is considered the top level for professional rugby in the world. And so I just uh, want to first of all acknowledge the role that Councillor Jay Robinson did play in giving them the early encouragement. She brought me to give them further encouragement. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a team that has to fly, think about this for a minute, they've got to fly back and forth across the ocean um, to play. Um, so they can be a home team here in Toronto where we're so proud of them. 
uh, but also to play their games where they don't have probably an awful lot of fans cheering them on uh, overseas. Um, and so I want to just say a special word of congratulations to Paul, the head coach, uh, who I met early on when he'd been hired uh, to be the coach uh, because, uh, you know, it takes great players, but it also takes great coaching. And we're seeing that now with, uh, with the Leafs and the difference it's making to have a top flight people in the coaching ranks. I want to say to the players who are here today, um, we are extremely proud of you, and we do consider you part of the you know, great uh, sort of collection of, of teams we're very proud of in the city and every bit of major league uh, team, and thank you for the effort you made into the club support staff who are also represented here today for uh, the efforts that you've made. And then the last thing I want to say is this. Um, I want to say thank you to the fans, and I've had a chance to sort of see the fact that Lamport Stadium really is getting filled up, and it was from the beginning. You know, it wasn't that there was like, you know, 604 people for the first game. There was a good crowd, and the crowds have built up as the Wolfpack have done uh, better or better. The team is fully invested in our city, and that's thing, one thing I'll say to you. From the first day, from that opening press conference, yeah. they've yeah. done this first class in terms of saying we're not going to, you know, do this on the cheap. We're going to do this in a professional manner, and, it, and the results uh, have been the same. They've partnered with local family-owned businesses here in Toronto to do a lot of the stuff they have to do to make a success of the team, and they're continuing to raise the profile of the team. And so one of the things we wanted to do today was to say thank you for bringing pride to the city and the rugby world, and I'm sure they're getting written up overseas and we don't even see it, and that's good for Toronto as well, to be written up in the rugby uh, write-ups overseas, and we're kicking kicking butt, uh, and, and I hope they're writing that up too. And so um, keep up the great work. I encourage all the people who are watching at home today, but also all the members of council, if you haven't been, to go and try a game because they're tons of fun. Um, and I just want to ask Paul uh, to come up here. I think he's got the champion, one of the many championship trophies with him. And, the, and, and if he wants to come and bring that up here, I think he may even want to say a word or two. Um, but we are proud of you and we congratulate you and we thank you for coming here today. Everybody, come on up then. Yeah, you should all, it's a good idea, you should all come up. I didn't want them all to feel they had to speak only because uh, unaccustomed as they are to public speaking. You, on the other hand, I know are an accomplished speaker. Congratulations. Look at the mirror to hold it. Do you want to hold it? Well, we'll just hold on. We'll all come up, we'll find every, the whole group right here together. Yes. Have you seen this guy's arms? Are you going to say a few words? Yes. Yeah, I'll just just do the camera. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll pitch it. Come out of here, guys. I'm not insulting this guy. Well, should we stay here? Should we stay here? <laughs> Um, Mr. Mayor and distinguished guests, just on behalf of Toronto Wolfpack, I think it's a huge pleasure to be invited here today. As Mr. Mayor said, I was there at the press conference when we launched the thing and it was a very proud moment and this city's uh, continued to provide me and, and the team with, with proud moments and um, to be accepted uh, within the rich tapestry of Toronto sporting history and, and rub shoulders with your great sporting teams is, uh, is magnificent for us and, and very, very uh, proud achievement for, for our boys. So on behalf of the boys and all our staff, everybody on the field and off the field, uh, we'll continue to do our best and represent the city in the, the best way we, we possibly can. But we thank you from the bottom of our heart for all the support and acceptance that you and your city have provided to me and my team. So thank you very much. Cheers.
I have one more thing to do, uh, Madam Speaker, if I might. And I think, uh, by the way, I think Grimes had something to do with it. any sporting event he did. I forget he was involved early on as well, and uh, I thank him for that. Uh, Madam Speaker, just in case we finish today, and uh, I would just add an editorial comment, um, that there is absolutely no reason whatsoever why we couldn't finish by 8 o'clock if we all cooperate together to get our business done and have people say what they need to say. But just in case, or if we finish later or whatever, we, I didn't want to miss the opportunity, and I gather this has been done before uh, by mayors at the end of a term, uh, as we reach the end of the last council meeting of the term. Um, I want to begin actually by saying uh, thank you to the council because again, we all, there's things that go on in here and there's debates that happen and uh, things said about us, frankly, in the media and that's fair enough. But I think we have, uh, I'm actually amazed because I, as you know, I had some um, experience working in the provincial government in the legislature, but also uh, in the premier's office many, many years ago. And I think the amount that actually does get done here is remarkable uh, in terms of the business that gets done. If you look at the size of these agendas and the fact that while the meetings probably do last longer for a variety of reasons than they might otherwise, that there's a lot that gets done for people in here. If you even look at the granular nature of some of the items, they're very granular and they're very local, but they're very important to people who live in that particular part of town and others more important to the, uh, to the um, well-being of the city as a whole. And so I just want to say thank you to the councillors because, uh, you know, we, we're, none of us are in this business to get thanked by people. You're in business to do public service. But I want to say thank you to the council because I think we've worked quite well together and perhaps a little better than in some prior times. And it's not a matter of comparing times. Every time is different. Uh, but we're, I think we've worked well together. And one of the things that helps us with the meetings is, and this is the part that mayors have, have sometimes uh, done, I gather, is to say thank you to the speaker. Um, I, well, the, probably the smartest thing that I did um, in, in taking this office, and you, some of you might argue that I haven't done too many smart things, but one of the smartest things I did was to decide not to sit up there and chair these meetings, because I see the pictures from days gone by, and believe it or not, I was once, and the people that will least believe this are the people up there, I once sat up there 35 years ago as a young man in a summer job uh, covering city council meetings for a couple of radio stations in town, and the mayor always sat in the chair of these meetings. It was then the smaller city of Toronto Council. But, um, and, and, and Francis will know because we talked about this, and many of you talked to me about this, and they weren't sure, I mean, and, and, and you know, about whether it would be the right choice. And Francis and I had quite a long conversation, and, and it was just a conversation that sort of said, look, I really wanted to bring a better tone to the discussions here, and it was a contribution of the councillors, the mayor, and the speaker that had to achieve that, but the speaker was an indispensable part of making sure that happened. And I think that that has happened, and I say to the media and other citizens when they ask me about this from time to time, we haven't yet achieved the, probably the state we should, and we certainly haven't achieved perfection on that, but I think things have been better in terms of the productivity and the general tone most of the time in here. I will tell you, I get the unique opportunity of being the seatmate to Councillor Mamalidi, and I hear the sotto voce conversations that go on, the sort of mumbling back and forth between, and most of you wouldn't be able to hear it, it's not meant that you should, and that's very interesting, but um, I just want to say, uh, Francis, uh, that, that um, you know, you, uh, there's no question about the effort you put in, the amount of time you sit up here um, and uh, the, the, the time when it must become stressful because we haven't allowed for a break to allow you to go outside and have a fresh air break. Um, <laughs> the difficulty of the job in trying to be fair and balanced and trying to keep order and keep us moving along in here. And I will say at the same time, um, that I, I, I'm, you know, I've only been here for four years, but I can see as well that, of course, the speaker can't do her job and we can't do our job without the people sitting at the clerk's table. And again, I have a much greater appreciation of that now than I would have before I came in here. But so a, thank, a big thank you to this uh, group as well as we uh, hopefully do. Uh, and we just didn't want to run the risk of ending up at 11 o'clock tonight. We can finish at 8. And having half the people not here and, and not be able to say, say thank you to the council, thank you to the clerk's table, but in particular, thank you to you for a job you have that's a lonely job um, and that sometimes it can, I'm sure, seem unrewarding because people get on you, but uh, you do it and these meetings couldn't function without uh, your leadership. And so we have just a very small gift which is supposed to emerge now from the back of the... Uh, there you are. And those are uh, for you, I'm, I'm sure, on behalf of all the members of council who respect uh, what you do and what you do. For you.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to members of council. And I'm surprised that Councillor Mamlidi stood up and applauded. <laughs> but I thank you. I didn't expect this, Mr. Mayor, for your kind words. But I want to thank members of council uh, for the past four years, the respect that you have given me as speaker. Um, thank you to all. And I think this term was a lot more smoother than the past term. And, uh, and thanks to you and, uh, you know, for members of council, even though we don't agree all the time, I think there's that respect, which is so important for all of us here in the council chamber. So thank you. But special thanks to the clerk and the clerk staff. They're amazing. They're amazing. Uh, When the clerk is trying to put forward these members' motions and amendments and, you know, put it all together, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult. I can, I can tell that it's very difficult for them. So thank you very much for your support as well in the past four years. And thank you, Yuli, for this book on an everyday etiquette guide. And <laughs> I, I'm not going to read the title. Uh, it's unparliamentary. And I don't want to get tweeted. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it will be a great guide for the new council procedures in the new term. So we have to adopt all the procedures that are in here. Thank you very much to the clerk. <laughs> Councillor Councilor McMahon. Thank you very much. Good morning, Collegiate College. So I just, on my last council day, I have a motion. That City Council directs City Clerks to ban the use of the phrase, I will just be brief. <laughs> and any variation of the phrase from all City Council meetings, Standing Committee meetings, and any other location, Toronto City Hall, or anywhere in the City of Toronto as a whole. <laughs> and I remember Jamie Strachan once saying, anyone who starts their speeches with, I'm just going to be brief, is never brief. So I'm just going to give you, <laughs> Mr. Prince is not here, uh, a couple uh, pieces of advice uh, as I leave. Um, and that is, the first is to actually try to be brief and be discerning. And not everyone wants to hear us speak on everything all the time. So they'd like to see more action. Um, and number two, to please be respectful of staff. And even though um, sometimes we uh, disagree with them and vice versa, just to agree respectfully or disagree respectfully and professionally. And let them answer the question before you ask the next question. Uh, and the last one of advice is term limits. You know, my favorite topic of all time. And, uh, one supporter. Um, and you know, if we, we know the uh, edge of incumbency, we know how difficult it is to unseat an incumbent, and if we truly want uh, the makeup of council that we, we aspire to, the gender equity, the diversity, and the youth, we're going to have to, we say we want that all the time, we're going to have to step aside. And we can get in, do a good job, and get out give someone else a chance, and continue to city build from the outside. That, those are my little tidbits um, of advice. Take them, just do what you want with them. Uh, in 2010, I came in here on a mission. I knew I was four years anyways, and possibly eight. And my mission was to make Toronto more livable, to cut through the red tape, to, um, to loosen up the rules, to empower residents to get involved, and to create uh, a culture of yes. And I think we did some of that, freeing the food trucks, uh, mighty middle budget salvation, Dean Cole, bonfires in parks, art installations in, in the death of winter in, in the beach, laneway suites, Councilor Blau, bike lanes, Sagamihara liaising, Councilor Thompson, uh, trees, plastics, transform TO, uh, Councilor Perks and Layton. Uh, we did many things 
together. And I like to think I left my mark here in some small way. And I want to thank you to my collegial colleagues. Um, I've learned a lot from you. And um, it's been, you're an immensely interesting cast of characters. And Especially the background. You deeply love uh, this city and your passion about building a better city. And I, uh, it's been an honor to work with you. Um, and thank you to our mayor, John Tory, uh, uh, who's a class act. He lives, breathes, and eats Toronto. Um, salt of the earth uh, guy, and, and thank you for your leadership. And thank you for honoring me with a position on, on executive committee till, till midnight every night at executive. It's been a treat. And thank you to city staff. You, you don't always receive the accolades you deserve from us or from the public, uh, but just know in our hearts that we appreciate that you build a better city every day. And I thank you for teaching me how the city works. And you'll still see me, see me around, maybe breaking rules. I don't know. You'll have to. <laughs> and uh, to my team over there, uh, Ellen, uh, Stephanie, our intern, Max, and Peter. And Abby's getting married, so she's not here. I hope you let me out to go to her wedding tomorrow. Um, and they are a fantastic team. You know you have to be tight with your team in, in this crazy job. You need loyalty. They are like your family. They know more things about you than they want to know, and they could write a book on you, but they have been phenomenal. I'll be very sad uh, for us to separate, but they're available for hire if anyone wants them. And last but not least to our speaker, um, Nunziata, Frances Nunziata, who has kept, kept the peace as best she can in here and um, uh, led by example. She's been fantastic. I do have I will tell a story. When I first got in, the second day of council, Francis was yelling out, MM, 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 all the time in the afternoon. And I started to sweat and was wondering why I'm in so much trouble. And then I found out it was member motions, MM. <laughs> so you will always remember me <laughs> in this chamber. And I have a little gift for you. It's a little different than what the mayor gave you. And it's a bullshit button. And, uh, <laughs> I just thought you could use it next term, and I'm just going to give it to you. Thank you. Everybody put on your helmets. Thank you for the bullshit. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor McMahon. You forgot to start you off by Okay, Councillor Matlow. Um, I'll be brief. <laughs> <laughs> um, much, much, much has and will be said about uh, our, our parting colleagues, and I just wanted to echo uh, my appreciation and gratitude for their service and their friendship um, over the past uh, four and in some cases eight years. But I wanted to just make a, a, a mention of my seatmate who didn't expect me to do this. Um, when, when Megan was appointed, uh, most of us uh, didn't know her. I didn't know her. And I've had the opportunity over the past two sessions to sit with her and observe her thoughtful reflections on each of the items, an honest struggle over each decision in a way where she wanted to determine what was genuinely the right thing to do, not taking anyone's lead, but making her own decisions on each one, and also her just genuine reflections about how we do things as well or as poor at times as we do. Um, so I just wanted to thank Megan for her service the past two sessions, and um, hopefully, although she made a promise about next term, perhaps in the future we'll see her back here or in another form in government, because I would submit she's the kind of person we want in representative government. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. So members of council, we will now, oh, sorry, I, I didn't see your name there, sorry. Councillor Davis? Oh. <laughs> okay, so I won't be brief. <laughs> have you ever? And I have a long, as usual, have you ever been and I have a long speech. 
as usual. And I've researched it. Um, um, <laughs> three, and it's a report request. <laughs> Don't worry, that's not true. <laughs> um, you know, the other night uh, I went out and uh, it was dark and into the square and looked up uh, at City Hall and I have to say after 15 years, um, every time I go out and look up at the towers, I am still overwhelmed um, with the honor of uh, being a city councillor in this amazing city. I wasn't going to do this. <laughs> I have been incredibly privileged to represent, um, to serve in this chamber and to represent uh, the residents of Ward 31, Beaches East York, for four terms. And I've worked with many residents, remarkable people in every single neighborhood to um, create the kinds of communities they want and to help them to bring the resources and the support of uh, the city to make those things a reality. Now sadly, Ward 31 is going to disappear on December 1st. Um, Beaches East York, Ward 31. Um, our ward was mostly the former East York with a swath of Toronto at the bottom. Um, and there was a, is a tremendous uh, sense of identity and pride. And uh, it also, that sense of East York, that East York sensibility um, is combined with an emerging and dynamic new uh, community at the east end of Ward 31. Um, and it bridges the suburban reaches of the city with the urban downtown core. It is a fabulous, fabulous community. And I want to thank all of the residents uh, of my ward who have worked with me and supported me over these years. Now, I don't know um, um, what could possibly work to describe the new Ward 35. Um, it's going to include several North York neighborhoods, new ones, um, from two other wards. Uh, the eastern border is going to go from Eglinton to the Danforth, and it is going to be a challenge to build a sense of community with this very broad ward. Um, and uh, I think, Joe, in trying to come up with a name, that maybe it could be called Danforth Dawn Valley, because that's what the combination of these neighborhoods will be. Um, but I'm sure we will find a way uh, to build that sense of community within this ward. And I want to just say that I do think that as we approach these new wards, we, they must be given the resources necessary. Uh, to make sure that we can do the kind of outreach we need to and hope that that sort of small, petty austerity that we have seen reemerge um, uh, in Queen's Park, uh, cutting budgets and uh, small things that really don't provide solutions. But I hope we don't see that again and we give our new councillors in these new wards sufficient resources. Um, it has been such an incredible learning environment for me. I have to say I came from the human services side and to learn what I have learned has been so exciting and dynamic. Um, and I wanted to write a few things down. I've learned lead pipes to parking permits, sewage sludge to street sweepers, CDOs, CSOs, DPOs, benchmarks and market value state of good repair and good long-term care and I could go on rhyming uh, all of the various things that I have learned while I have been here but I have learned it from the exceptionally talented civil service that we have um, here and right across uh, the city you make our city better every day 
And uh, you do this. Make these miracles happen uh, every day off every corner of your desk, your truck, your swimming pool, the dining room, or the hearing room. Every one of you makes a contribution to this city, and I thank you on behalf of my residents, and I'm sure on behalf of all of my colleagues and all of the residents of Toronto. Um, it's difficult uh, to let go of projects uh, that are underway, but I know they will be in good hands and that they will be uh, completed in the next term. <laughs> the Dawes Road Library, um, our uh, ravine plan, our uh, Topham Park new community uh, facility in Stanwallow, there are many things underway and uh, I know they will continue to happen and I wanted to say um, I am going, don't have a plan, I'm not going to the private sector or the public sector or any sector, um, I'm going out to uh, to take on things, though, that will have meaning and impact and will have opportunities for personal growth and learning and all the things that I know many of you around here would love to be doing um, who, that you haven't had time to do over many years. Uh, but you'll probably see me back here in, on some issue or another, I promise. <laughs> um, but I, too, wanted to give you... Uh, uh, some parting words and everyone has their list of ten uh, and I thought I would uh, highlight ten things I've learned here uh, and um, they're serious too um, and I hope you'll take them uh, all as well-meaning and, and uh, in good faith. Um, one, uh, the city has a fiscal sustainability problem and we need leadership and courage to solve it. Uh, the pr province, too, the province and feds must respect the decisions we make here and give us the tax room and the jurisdiction we need. Rational transit planning has been sabotaged by politically motivated interventions at every level of government and approving or changing transit plans should be prohibited. <laughs> uh, should be prohibited uh, either during uh, election periods <laughs> uh, or immediately before. Um, deepening poverty and growing inequality threaten our future success. And what we need is a deeper commitment and growing resources. Many councillors don't read their reports or budgets but they have strong opinions about them both. The mayor's office doesn't need more power, just more willingness to share it. Our city does many things very well. We just don't believe it or promote it. Our democracy is robust and healthy, but too often influenced by the powerful and the wealthy. We have plans that we are afraid to implement them. And 10, we need respect and caring every day in this city. Finally, I just want to recognize and thank my staff, who I think are down here, Victoria, Jay, Laura, Leah, yeah, who, um, who solve problems and assist our residents every single day and uh, make a huge difference um, in the lives of our residents. So um, thank you for all your support over all these years. And uh, I look forward um, to uh, engaging in life outside these chambers to make sure that we bring into these chambers changes that will continue to improve the lives of Toronto residents. Thank you so much. And I do want to acknowledge uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you uh, for your leadership here and to the speaker. Um, it's been a blast. <laughs>
we haven't always uh, agreed. Um, I've tended to share my opinion with you too frequently uh, from my seat. Um, and for that, I do apologize. It's my lively and engaging manner that uh, tends to uh, have me not check my impulses uh, when it comes to offering my views to you and to others. So for that, and to all of my colleagues, um, when I have uh, expressed my views to you from my seat, um, it has always been with good intent. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Councillor Fillion. Uh, thank you. I guess this is the time for farewell speeches. So I'll, um, um, you know, even after being a, a politician for more than half my life, I'm, I'm still not comfortable giving speeches. And uh, I think I wrote out about five different versions of this and scrapped all of them. One was too heartfelt and another wasn't heartfelt enough. And one was too disillusioned that I didn't want to leave on a, <laughs> on a downer. And... Um, and uh, one was too preachy, and I figured it was a pretty small choir here that wanted to hear that. So um, I'll just kind of speak randomly. And, and you, you stand up here, and kind of your political life sort of flashes in front of you. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's a strange feeling. Um, the, and I have such mixed feelings about this room. But what's interesting is when you think of the highlights from your political life, really most of them didn't happen in this room. Most of them, when you think about it, are out in the, in the community. And, um, um, and those are the things, you know, I think you probably feel happiest about or proudest about when you leave uh, the new recreation center or park or child care center, um, cultural festival that maybe wouldn't have existed without you and uh, that those things kind of live on in the community. Um, this, this place, I have such a love-hate relationship with it, um, probably a good time to leave. Um, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, on the one hand, to do, I'll just dwell on the, the love, uh, the love part of it is, uh, I, you know, I'm uh, maybe too much of an idealist, but uh, I just love the ideal that the community you know, 44, soon to be 47 communities across the city come together and choose somebody to come down here and represent them. And we all sit here and we're surrounded by professional and wise advisors and we try to, you know, come together to do what's uh, um, in the common good. It's just such a marvelous concept and to be uh, part of a small number of people who get to do that in a city like Toronto, like what better job could you ever have, you know? So, um, it was, so I will really miss this place because there are times when all of that comes together and it's really magic and we've all, we've all experienced that. We've also experienced the heartbreak when it, uh, when it doesn't happen. Um, you kind of wonder what, you know, what relationships continue after you leave this place, and I guess I'll find out, but I know that, uh, um, you know, a lot of times you, it's like, it's, we all have this strange bond together, you know, it's like you're, you're on this strange journey together, and, and uh, you know, you become, you become close with people because you sit near them, and again, you're on this this uh, trip together, and, and uh, I always think of Rob Ford when, when I um, think of unusual friendships, and my friendship with, with him was so unusual, I had to write two chapters to try to explain it, but, uh, um, you know, I, I actually still miss Rob as the guy who sat two seats away from me and uh, was just looking for uh, somebody to, to make football bets with, you know, and that's... Uh, we see all kinds of sides of each other in here, not just the politician, but the uh, people, and especially those who are sitting close to you. You really get to know them as people, so I will, uh, I will miss all of that. Um, 
you also formed some close friendships, and I've been very fortunate to have two close friends sitting on, on either side of me. Um, I will miss a lot of the staff in this building and, uh, and uh, in the North York Civic Centre, the staff in my office, but there's still four more months to work with all of those people, so I'll say goodbye to them later, as, um, and the same with um, individuals in the, in the Willowdale community who I'll uh, be seeing a lot of over the next few months and will continue to uh, work with, especially on Transform Young. Um, but I just want to sort of end with a collective thank you to the people of Willowdale um, who have supported me over um, 11 elections. Um, earlier this year <coughs> in April, you s we all got to see what kind of a community uh, Willowdale is and the sort of people who live there. Um, and that's, that's been the case for 36 years and uh, it's different people now, though some of them are still the same. But it's really just a um, um, wonderful community and, um, and I felt very privileged to have had this job representing them for all these years. Thank you, Councillor Fillion. Councillor Cole. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, uh, I guess I'm making a speech this morning. Um, Can you be brief? Uh, you know what? I, it, it, it is such a, an honor and kind of privilege and pleasure to do what we do. And uh, of course, I'm proud of all the accomplishments in my local community. And we all can kind of cite those new parks and streets and how we help people. Um, and I, I'm so thankful to the people in Ward 15 at Eggman and Lawrence for putting their faith and trust in me over the last eight years and really working with me. I mean, this, we can't do what we do unless you have residents that uh, support so, much, so many of those efforts. And uh, the, the, the one accomplishment that I, I think all of you know I'll cite uh, and the one that uh, means a lot to me is Lawrence Heights. Uh, and just to see it actually come out of the ground now, it shows you what we can do in this place and how we can help people. And I'll, I'll make a bit of a plea for Lawrence Heights as I leave. Uh, you know, we say it's a citywide project, and I don't want to get into the kind of comparison politics, but it still needs help from this council. It doesn't have the aquatic centers and the, the recreation centers and that investment from this building that we've seen in other revitalizations. And so while it's going to be a stunning success and it's going to uh, repair people's lives and make a neighborhood and I think our city so much better, uh, it needs continuing support from this chamber, and so my plea to you is to is to truly make it a citywide priority, and it's one that I know uh, you'll all be proud of for having supported when uh, uh, th when it becomes reality. And in fact, uh, people are moving in in the fall into the new building, so I encourage you all to be there for that ribbon, ribbon cutting. It'll be a special one. Uh, I, I want to thank you all for supporting my work as chair of the TTC. I sometimes wonder why I put my hand up for that job. Um, but, you know, <laughs> talk about learning a lot. Ho holy smokes, things you would never, issues you would never imagine. And so after hundreds of hours, I hope I've left the organization in better shape. But I'd also just say that, you know, you, you see me all uh, with the mayor often at these press conferences announcing these accomplishments. It, it's true. We've added a tremendous amount of service to the city and improved transit of the city over the last four years. And so while I'm, I can be there to cut the ribbon and announce it, it's because this council has invested in transit. And so sometimes we're hard on ourselves on that front, but really it's been year after year investments. Every, every TTC board meeting for the fellow commissioners here, we get to announce procurements, expansion work is, is, is uh, advancing, hundreds and hundreds of buses, new streetcars, new subways. And we're only able to do that because of all of you and your commitment to public transit. And so I think that's something that we've got to maybe talk about a little more. And certainly I'm proud to have been at the helm of the TTC during those days. And I, I truly believe that people who use transit in the city are better off because of it and, and the city's better off because of it. I, I want to touch on a, a couple of city issues. Maybe um, this may not maybe my last speech, so good. It hopefully will be done today. Sometimes I worry that there are two cities still in Toronto. Um, and I'm, I'm in a ward where I kind of straddle that fence, you know, down south of Eglinton, it's a bit more the politics, the urban form, the issues are a bit more urban. As I move up towards the old North York to the 401, it becomes more suburban. You know, while there's, say, a debate about bike lanes downtown, I'll be at a planning meeting where my residents are saying, you've got to widen Dufferin. 
we need more lanes of traffic. And they think the kind of the debate we have down here on some of these issues is like we're from Mars or speaking a, a different or foreign language. And so the only reason I bring that up is because I don't, my worry always is that that divide, sometimes it gets glossed over, but if it continues to kind of exist, it's not healthy for our city. And you see it in mayoralty campaigns, you see it in some of the debate in this room. And, and so I guess my only ask is that, you know, recognizing that exists, I think one of the things I wish I did better, and I think we can all do a better job of, is making sure we just understand that perspective. Because that person who really desperately wants that bike lane, that personally desperately wants me to add four more lanes to the Allen, um, they, they truly believe it's the right solution. And I think there's a, we have to maybe get out of our own communities, get out of this building, and try and do a better job collectively of making sure we understand that uh, there are those different perspectives. And, and part of our job is to bridge that and to make sure that doesn't become a, 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 something that divides and actually makes a lesser city of Toronto. I want to just touch on a couple other issues that I, I feel uh, we need to spend more time on. And, and sometimes they bubble up and come to the fore, and they have recently, but we need to spend more time on. I believe that the preponderance of mental health issues in residents living in big cities is so much more pronounced than any of us uh, acknowledge. And may, actually, probably people in this chamber see it every day. And it's not a city issue. I don't think it's a provincial issue. It's a federal issue. It's all of our issue. And I think it's something that we collectively have to turn our minds to and do a way better job at. The, the other issue that I think is, is sadly uh, systemic and exists is anti-black racism. I'm really proud to represent some communities and I, I feel I have great support from communities uh, in my ward where they're largely uh, Caribbean, African communities. And I think when you just see these graduation rates and young men and women who can't get jobs and they feel it, and, and uh, I think we have to do a better job as a city uh, making sure that we accept that's an issue, it's not a scary thing to debate, it's an important thing to debate, and we have to put it higher up on the agenda. Uh, talking about this place, I actually, I actually love this place. Um, it's a crazy, crazy building, uh, and I think all of us in a way are a bit crazy to be here. Um, but I wanna thank all of you. I, I, I learned so much from you people and I have over the last eight years, it's, it's outstanding. And you're all really good at your jobs. Um, and you actually all, for anyone listening out there, work, every counselor in this room works really hard. Uh, it's a great job, it's a challenging job, it's an honor, but everyone works really hard at this job. And, and there's often this, you know, they talk about oh, City Hall's a circus and it's crazy. Has anyone ever been to the provincial legislature? Go, go sit there for one hour, or even in Ottawa. It is just cat calls, desk banging, uh, and, and speaking points. Nothing actually gets done there. And this is where we actually are forced to collaborate. And yes, people say the sausage making all happens out in the open, so it looks messy, but in fact, we have to collaborate. You have to get 23 type A personalities to agree on any single one issue. And so I actually think we're more civil here, we're more productive here, and we should actually be proud and not denigrate ourselves and what this chamber does, because I think we do amazing work every day. The other, the other thing I just would observe about us and here and how we act, I sometimes wonder why we feel we have to knock each other down to advance uh, our, our, our goals, whether political or how we, how we want to help our communities. Because in fact, it in no way advances your efforts. Uh, we're not bound by some of the con confines of party systems down here. And so, I, I, and I'm, I've been guilty of it too, and I just, I just sometimes wonder why, and maybe that's just, you know, it's just bred into politics and we feel we have to do it. But, I certainly think there can be a lot less of that in this chamber, and I think we'd be a lot uh, more productive if there was. I, I, like all of you, and when I, well, I say this is a privilege to do this job, uh, once you're in this role, you're led into people's lives in a way that no one else really is. I mean, we're all in these basements and attics and garages and people's backyards, and in many times they're telling us kind of their most personal issues and challenges. You know, they're, they're uh, you know, coming to you because they can't find work or the problems with their family or their kids. And so I, I think it's such a privilege and honor to get that opportunity, that we have that opportunity to help people and that people let us in like that. I don't think it happens with other levels of government and I'm not sure it help happens with many other professions and I think that's such a, an honor and privilege. And I wanna thank the residents of, in my ward, Ward 15, Eglinton Lawrence, for kind of letting me into those basements and often feeding me in those basements. Um, a lot of tomatoes grown in Ward 15, if you didn't know. And, and, and homemade wine, which I'd always have to explain why I couldn't drink that at a 9 o'clock meeting in the morning. But, but, not, um, hens, but not hens. No hens yet. Yeah. Uh, 
So I, I really, I really want to thank those residents for kind of letting me in. Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, as a kid, many of you know I grew up in this world. I hated this job. And I would always be asked, when are you going to run? When are you going to I was like, never. I hate, this. I hate this job. So it's kind of, I always laugh that I'm here and enjoying it so much after saying I would never do it. I, I, we can only do these jobs with uh, a lot of people who support us. And certainly, I think my staff are here, if they could all wave. Um, they have to answer the calls. They deal with the frequent flyers, um, some of the issues they deal with. And, and they're, they're like, um, they're, they're, it's, uh, it's, social, it's social service work that they really do. It's, uh, um, and they do amazing, and they do amazing work. So thank you, all of you, for the work you've done to support my efforts. Of course, thanks to my residents. Thank you to my family uh, who uh, uh, put up with this crazy job. My, my kids, I think, think it's really cool. My wife, not as much. Uh, but uh, as we all know, it's, it, none of us could do the work we do and give to the city and our communities if we didn't have that support at home. And so I'll just lastly say, uh, you know, I, I love this city. I, I think this is the greatest city on the planet. I don't think we say that enough. Um, and I think that it is a greater city because of the work we do in this chamber. And so I hope I've uh, contributed to making it a greater city in some small way. And I want to thank everyone here. Uh, thank you for uh, letting me serve for the last eight, to my residents for letting me serve for the last eight years. And who knows, maybe I'll see you back here again one day. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cole. Members of Council, we will now review and confirm the order paper. There are 61 items left on the agenda. One last question. No. Councillor I forgot to do uh, something. And this is a gift. It's appropriately wrapped in a Christmas bag. <laughs> uh, it's a gift uh, for Councillor McMahon. And it actually um, was a gift that um, someone gave to me, to me, that I'm going to re-gift. Um, because I think she may need it. And uh, although, maybe not. She's pretty good at this. And I'm going to just demonstrate it for you. Come here, counselor. OK. <laughs> I probably shouldn't promote a, a commercial product. I'll cover the name. Uh, uh, but it's called Extra Loud. And this is for your bike. Come. So just hold this. Are you ready? Ne Nathan, careful. I know. <laughs> and Pull that cord down, Don't yeah. do it in the microphone. Don't do it in the microphone. It's really loud. Really, an air horn. <laughs> <laughs> so that's to make sure you can continue to, so that Councillor McMahon can continue to toot her horn and stay safer on the road. Okay, members of council, we will now review and confirm the order paper. There are 61 items left on the agenda, plus 11 member motions. Our first item of business this morning is item EX 35.14 on the Toronto Hydro Audited Financial Statements. I will now take the release of holds. Please put your name under request to question staff. Councillor Mahavik. Yes, thank you very much. Um, Madam Speaker, on page 4, GM 29.21, um, having spoken to staff uh, and had a very good briefing with them, uh, I'm now uh, convinced that they are going in the right direction, and so I'm ready to release it, but in order to release it, I have to withdraw my motion that I had submitted. Okay, so Count, uh, Councillor Mahavik would like to withdraw his previous uh, motion on favour. Carried. And you're just moving the item? This, yeah, whatever executive. Okay, thank yeah, you. I'm, I'm on the item, on favor, carried. Councillor Mamaliti. Uh, Madam Speaker, I got a few that I want to release. Um, 
There's a bit of anger that's built up in my community and I've got to be uh, there, I think, this afternoon for many of the discussions, uh, given the, the shooting yesterday on Islington Avenue. So I'd hope uh, we can have some patience here. I just want, on some of them, I just want to vote against. So uh, on Executive Committee uh, 36.26, we're in the middle of that dialogue, right? So there's nothing I can do with that. I've moved the motion. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so you're releasing that and you want a recorded vote? I, I think we're in the middle of a debate with that one. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to. I held it, but we're in the middle of a debate. Yeah, I know. I think that we were in the middle of questions and speakers. Uh, on page four? Yeah, no, just, just one sec. I just want, so on this one here, before we, we release this one, I think that we did, we did have some speakers on it. Yeah, yeah. So the, I, okay. No, okay. Yes, okay. Page four, um, GM 29.15. Uh, I did want to move a motion, but I'll, I'll just leave it alone and I'll just, uh, I'll just move, move the, uh, the recommendation. Record a vote. That's okay. okay, recorded vote on page four, GM 29.15. Recorded. Yes, we are having a recorded vote. It's on the screen, recorded vote. No. Councillor Kelly, please. Councillor Peruzza. Councillor Wong Tam, thank you. Councillor Peruzzi, your vote, please. The item is adopted 39 to 3. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mamaliti. Uh, page 9. CC 44.9, I did have a few comments to make, but really all I want to do is vote against it on a recorded vote. If somebody's interested in holding it, I'll leave it, but uh, I just want to vote against it. It's page 9, CC, page nine, CC 44.9. 44 okay, it's at... Um, I won't be here to debate the referral. I'd like to refer it, but I won't be here to debate the referral, most likely. So I just want to vote against it. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll withdraw the, the motion and, and vote against it. Okay. So um, um, Councillor Mamadi would like to withdraw his previous motion. On favor, carried. So on the item recorded vote. Councillor Perks, please. The item is adopted 40 to 2. Councillor Mamaliti. Uh, page 9, CC 44.19. Uh, again, uh, I'd, I'd just like to vote against this. It's up to someone else if they want to keep holding it. Page 9, CC 44.19. Councillor Mamlidi would like to release it. It's on the screen. Recorded vote, please. Recorded vote. Councillor Peruzza, we need your vote. Councillor Davis. 
Councillor Prutza. Councillor Grimes, please. The item is adopted 41 to 1. Councillor Mamalidi. And lastly, on page 10, I think it's the last one. If I have any more, I'll stand up again. No, that's it. Uh, no, there's one on page 10. It's the Metrolinx Finch West LRT. Yes, that's the public last one. Meeting, yeah. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to continue my debate against the LRT, hopefully after this election, uh, and won't put you through any more of my dialogue with respect to this. Uh, in an effort to make this meeting go uh, a little further, or uh, a little easier, so you're so I'm going to move. Uh, I'm going to move this uh, this report, and I'll vote in favor of it as well. You want a recorded vote? Okay. On favor, carried. Yeah, but count, Councillor Peruzza. Yeah. But it was on the, it's on, Councillor Peruzza, it was on the screen. Okay, Councillor Peruzza, the only thing I can do is ask for a member to move a motion to reopen. No, I, I said all in favor. Councillor Davis is moving to reopen. Councillor Kelly, please. Councillor Karajanis. Councillor Sow. Councillor Davis, please. Councillor Robinson, please. The motion to reopen does not carry. The vote is 27 to 15. The required two thirds majority has not been achieved. Councillor Cressy. Let him continue his BS with that and feed you all of that. Okay. okay. Okay, come on, please. Okay. Sorry, Giorgio. Please. Guys, guys, honestly. Let's right all. Oh. Councillor Mabliti, please. <clears throat> come on. No, Councillor no, Councillor Mamlidi and Councillor Peruzza, please. <coughs> okay. Uh, if I could, Speaker, on page 9, item CC 44.5698, Councillor Mamaliti, sorry, uh, page 9, CC 44.5698, Spadina Avenue, uh, I can release that item, uh, and connected with that item, because I'll be releasing both of them, is item CC 44.25, which is also 698 to 706 Spadina Avenue. So I can release those two. Okay. On page 9, CC 44.5, Councillor Cressy is releasing. On favor, carried. On page 9, CC 44.25, Councillor Cressy is releasing. On favor, carried. Councillor Cressy. And I have another one which I can release, which is on page 10. Item CC 44.41, 150 to 158 Pearl Street and 15 Duncan Street, Zoning Amendment Application Request for Directions. Uh, I can move the recommendations contained in the supplementary report. Uh, that was circulated yesterday, and so with that, I can release it. On page 10, CC 44.41, Councilor Cressy is releasing. It's on the screen, the amendment. All in favor? Carried. Item as amended. On um, favor, carried. Councillor DiCiano. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, 
EUI 32.3, page 6. EUI 32.3, final report for 5365 Dundas Street West. I have an amendment uh, that staff worked with uh, over the last few days. If we can, is that ready? My understanding it is. It's uh, not ready. Okay, we'll, we'll hold, hold it down for a little longer. Okay. okay. Councillor Bailao. Yes, Madam Speaker, on page 6, EY3277, I had some questions that I got <coughs> answered from staff. Councillor uh, Palacio moved a, an advanced circulated amendment, which uh, responds to my concerns, so if we can post that, we can release it as a quick item. Okay, Councillor Holiday. Okay, so I'll questions. continue to hold it on page um, 6. On page 11, I can release, well, I, if we can vote on MM44122, that could be done as well. What's the subject? What's the subject? Okay. Uh, Hill Tribunal hearing. Okay, so we'll put it on the screen. On page 11, MM44122, Councillor Bailao is just moving. It's a member's motion. Recorded vote. Councillor Peruzza, please. Councillor DiGiorgio. Councillor Davis, please. Councillor Thompson, please. Councillor Mamaliti, please. Councillor Crawford. Councillor McMahon and Councillor DiGiorgio, please. Councillor Thompson, please. Councillor Pasnack, when you're seated, please. The item is adopted unanimously, 43 in favor. Councillor Troisi. Madam Speaker, I'd like to release on page 7, TE 34.20. Just needed to amend uh, deleting part I of recommendation 6A and adopt instead the following new part I. Uh, yeah, this, this was in consultation with planning staff. These amendments are setting the section 37 community benefit allocations based on previously agreed totals. Okay, on page 70, 3420, Councillor Troisi, there's an amendment on the screen. All in favor, carried. Item as amended, all in favor, carried. Point of order, Madam Speaker. Point of order, Councillor DiCiano. Thank you, I tried to put my name back on and it doesn't, uh, won't go, but uh, staff told me that that motion is now available. So if I can uh, release page six, EY 32.3, we can put it on the screen. And I wasn't finished, but that's okay. Oh. That's okay. Make Sorry. sure the speaker hears me, Joe. EX on page 6, EX 32.3. It's uh, just a technical amendment by staff, um, and I can release it after the vote. <laughs> on page 6, EY 32.3, it's on the screen. Councillor DiCiano has an amendment. All in favor, carried. Item as amended, all in favor, carried. Councillor Carmichael Grip. Councillor Troisi. It's such a pleasure sitting beside Justin because um, I wasn't finished. <laughs> I'd like to release another one on page 8. Uh, TE34.48. And again, it's in consultation with planning staff. These amendments are setting the Section 37 community benefit allocation based on previously agreed totals. Thank you. Does the staff have your, the amendment? Oh, yes, it, was, it was circulated. It was previously uh, circulated. Okay, it's on the screen. <clears throat> Page 8, T34.48. Amendments on the screen. All in favor, carried. Item is amended. All in favor, carried. Councillor Carmichael Gribb. 
Thank you, Madam Speaker. On page 11, MM 44.30, um, just to mention that this puts paid duty officers in my ward without being consulted. Um, on an issue that is not an issue, we have had no complaints about the bridge construction or any traffic issues in my ward. So I will not be supporting this. And I would like a recorded vote, yeah. Oh, so you're just releasing it and you want a recorded vote. Is that it, Councillor? And then 44.30. Okay. Recorded vote. Councillor Peruzza, please. Councillor Giorgio. Councillor Layton. Councillor Shiner, please. Councillor Shan and Councillor Kelly, please. The item does not carry. The vote is 10 to 32. Councillor Matlow. Pardon? No, no, just a sec, just a sec. Just a sec, Councillor Matlow. I, I'm sorry, Councillor Thompson. What? Thank you, Speaker. I uh, had voted yes for that, but I actually meant to vote no, and I was wondering if we'd reopen, please. Okay. So Thank Councillor you. Perks is reopening. That previous item. Moving all these papers. Because he voted incorrectly. All in favor of reopening? Carried. Okay, so let's do the vote over. Thanks. Councillor Holiday, please. Councillor Peruzza, please. <clears throat> Councillor Shan, Councillor Sao, please. The item does not carry. The vote is 4 to 38. Like you were just doing. Councillor Matlow. Thank you, Ma Madam Speaker. On uh, page 7, uh, T34.3844 Jakes Avenue and 33 Rose Hill Avenue, I have a motion. Okay, on page 7, T34.38, Councillor Matlow has a motion. Okay, it's on the screen. Amendment, that's on, uh, page 7034.38. On favor of the amendment, carried. Item as amended. Oh, that was it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Pasternak. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, page 5, item PW um, 31. Six, I'll release that. I'd like a recorded vote so I can be shown in the negative. Okay, on page five, PW 31.6, Councillor Pasternak is releasing and he would like a recorded vote. Recorded vote. Sole source, and I've got people who. Councillor Mamaliti, please. Councillor Crisanti. Councillor Peruzza, please. The item is adopted 41 to 1.
Councillor Cole. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. On page number five, PG 31.8, uh, city planning staff have um, written up a motion for me, um, and it just uses, you can clearly see the words consider adding are there. Okay, on page five, PG 31.8, Councillor Cole is moving an amendment. It is on the screen. On favor, carry. Item as amended, all in favor, carry. I have a few more, Madam Speaker, we can kind of take a crack at. On item page number six, uh, North York 32.6. This is a uh, city initiated zoning bylaw on Oakwood Avenue. I can release that. On page six, NY 32.6, Councillor Cole is releasing. All in favor, carried. Thank you. Um, if clerks has a, the motion staff prepared ready on NY 32.65, the Yorkdale TDC pedestrian bridge, I could release that. Okay. If we can put it on the screen, page six, NY 32.65, Councillor Cole has an amendment. It's on the screen, on favor, carried. Item is amended, on favor, carried. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Do you actually believe Thank this? you. Councillor Perks. Thank you. Um, I had held an Etobicoke York item in Ward 7. Since the councillor's on his way back to his ward, I thought I could release it. I just have to find the number. Uh, page 6. EY 3222. EY 3222, request for interim directions report, 2370 Finch Avenue West, official plan and zoning bylaw amendment application. I can release that. Okay, on page six, EY 3222, Councillor Perks is releasing. All in favor? Carried. Councillor Burnside? Yes, uh, top of page 10, CC 44.26, I will be releasing that. On the top of page 10, CC 4426, Councillor Burnside is releasing 25 St. Dennis Drive. All in favor? Carried. Councillor Grimes. Thank you and good morning, Madam Speaker. On page 9, CC 44.24, Mimico by the Lake Secondary Plan, I can release that. Okay, on page 9, CC 4424. Recorded vote, please. Councillor Grimes is releasing. Recorded vote. Councillor Thompson, please, and Councillor Perutza. Councillor Ames. Councillor Ainsley. Councillor Ames. Councillor Ainsley. Councillor Ainsley. Councillor Fragadakis, please. Councillor Fletcher, please. The item carries unanimously 43 in favor. Thank you. Councillor Grimes. And Madam Speaker, on page 11, MM44124, uh, request for enhanced park maintenance on our base shores. I'd be happy to just move that. That was an added uh, yesterday. Okay, on page 11, MM44124, Councillor Grimes is moving. All in favor? Carried. Councillor Wong Tam. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. On page 10, CC 44.32, request for federal data on refugee asylum claimants in Toronto's shelter system. I would like to release that, please. 
I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear. You want to release it? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, on page 10, CC 4432, Councillor Wong Tam is releasing. On favor, carried. Councillor Fletcher. Councillor Fletcher. I'm sorry. I'm apology. I'm apologizing. Not quite. Is that on the uh, the releasing? Oh yeah, I'm releasing that. I'm just going to release page three. I'm going to release the um, one we were discussing yesterday on the reference checks because I had a conversation with the uh, city manager, and that's EX 36.45 police reference checks. She's assured me that with new people they will be going very quickly. Hey, okay, thank you. On page three, EX 36.45, Councillor Fletcher is releasing. All in favor, carried. Councillor Holliday. Uh, yes, um, uh, Deputy Mayor Bailao uh, used her uh, her opportunity there, so I'll, I'll call it out. EY 32.77 on page six. I'm okay with it. If, oh, no, if, hold on, hold on. But I it's her hold. No, hold on. I, I, I didn't realize that Councillor Fletcher had more. Sorry. Vote on that last one? Yes. Oh, okay. Then we'll go to... Uh, Pa did I do well? Did Thanks, well. Glenn. Page 8, TE 34, 213, Vision, Vision Zero recommendations from ward councillors, uh, and I'll release that. I'd like to hold that. Then I'll continue holding. Now I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Holliday. Um, EY 32.77 on page 6. It's actually held by Councillor uh, Bailao. Yes. Okay. All right. So on page 6, EY 32.77 for Rogers and Boone Avenue. So Councillor Bailao, there's a motion. Put it on the screen. Councillor uh, Palacio, you have an issue with it? You have a motion too? Okay, on page 6, EY 3277, amendments on the screen. All in favor, carried. On the amendment? On the item, recorded vote. Yes, recorded vote. Councillor Peruzza, please, your vote. Councillor McMahon, Councillor Layton. Councillor Mahavik, Councillor Fletcher. Councillor Peruzza, please. Okay. Councillor Peruzza, we close the vote. Can you tell me verbally how you voted, please? Motion carries unanimously, 43 in favor. Councillor Lane, I understand that you have a petition you'd like to present. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. This is a petition from uh, 1190, with 1,190 signatures of residents of Toronto that are supportive of us changing um, some conditions on our roaming permits for car share in order to help support car share in Toronto. Like to submit that to the clerks. All those in favor of receiving the petitions, on favor, carried. All those in favor of adopting the order paper, on favor, carried. Okay, so we'll go to our timed item, which is on page three, EX 35.14. So we need a motion to go in camera. Well, somebody told me they wanted to go on camera. Yeah, okay. No, I know. Okay, so does... Hello, um, members? Are, is, there, is there any member of council...
that wishes to go in camera on this item, which is Toronto Hydro Annual General Meeting, audited financial statements. Is there anybody? No? Okay. All right. So we'll uh, proceed in public, yes. Questions, Councillor Shiner? Okay, does anybody have any questions? Please put their name up. Councillor Shiner, question? Sorry, Madam Speaker? Yes. One, I need some order in the room. I don't want to fight the noise. And two, I want to ask my question from the podium with the screen on. Okay, so do you want to go up there? Yes. Okay. I think we need some light on it so you can, it's clear, Madam Speaker. And I don't know how to work the machine. Sorry. Okay, yeah. Councillor Shiner, you ready? Well, I'm just trying to get this clear on the screen. After 27 years, my eyes get a little tired in council. So, Madam Chair, so my question first of the Chair of Toronto Hydro is... Okay, there is uh, something wrong with your mic because I can't even hear you. Is this any better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so my question is of the Chair of Toronto Hydro. This is a document that we have in front of Executive Committee that's here today. And it shows a total compensation for the President and the CEO at 1087000 is that his total compensation? Uh, that's my understanding, Councillor. So in the public disclosures that go out, which is why I can ask this in public, it talks about additional benefits that accrue every year to the President and CEO. I believe this year it was a tune of $350,000. Why is that not part of the disclosure information to Toronto City Council as the shareholder. Uh, Councillor, I, I'd like to ask Avi Lethbridge, who's our Vice President of HR, to answer that question. I don't have that, those figures in front of me right now. I, th I believe she's the best person to ask. Um, okay, we, yes, okay, Councillor Fletcher, hold on. Madam Speaker, if you could hold my time. I've, I've I, I am holding your time. I, there's something wrong, we can't hear you. Can't hear me? I'm sorry, no. I got the mic on. Um, if you got me two mics, perhaps. Um, all I was uh, indicated. Can, can, hold on, hold on. Can we hear him now? Yes. Okay. 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 I'm sorry, I couldn't be heard over there. Yeah. Um, all I was going to say was um, the vice president or vice chairman of the board and our chairman of HR committee was available Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, not today. So unfortunately, he's not here. Um, he wasn't able to be here, and, and I know why council wasn't able to get to us on Monday as we originally thought. However, our Vice President of HR is here, Avi Lethbridge, and I think she'll be able to help you, Council, in so terms of these figures. My simple question is, is there additional compensation that's in the disclosure? All right. It's a Abby, yes can you, uh, or no, because I do have a number of questions that yeah. I don't Oh, that's to fine. Avi, are you able to? Councillor Shiner, can you ask through the chair, not him, uh, not directly? So, Madam Speaker, in due respect, I did ask the chair. Yeah. And my time continues to run even on this clarification. Okay. I've asked uh, uh, two questions that took less than 10 seconds. And all I asked was why, if there's additional compensation. Your time is on hold, by the way. Right. Th okay. I appreciate that. Why, if there's additional compensation as declared in public documents, is that information not part of the information that Toronto City Council is advised on an annual basis? I and then my question was is it not additional compensation? that the President and CEO earns. Okay, I'll start your time. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, everything is actually disclosed in the annual information form, 
and provided to the city, and it is disclosed. Um, I can provide the data to Councillor Shiner and yourself. But this is the compensation for Anthony Haynes. There's additional uh, compensation associated, not compensation, but other benefits that have to be disclosed, but it's all disclosed in the annual information form and provided to the city annually. So then the sheet I put up before is not correct. It is correct, it's the compensation. And then in the AIF, which we also provide with all the other materials, it discloses the breakdown of other benefits. So my question is, why was that not disclosed to the shareholders, Toronto City Council? It was, um, Madam Chair, it was disclosed so let's in get the to annual information let's document. Get to the, this, numbers. the document you presented was only for cash compensation. The rest is disclosed in the annual information form so then let me and provided to the city. Thank you. Thank you. So then if I go to this column here, his comp the president and CEO's compensation was $1,087,000 oh. plus an additional compensation that was in the other disclosures of 350000 bringing his compensation to $1,437,000. It's a yes or no. It's deferred. He can take it whenever he leaves, can he not? It's a bonus that he has earned. It, it's not a bonus, um, Madam Chair. It is, is a retirement allowance and disclosed in the AIF and provided to the city annually but and not, deferred. It's not paid on but, the annual compensation. Correct, but it accrues. So let me say then, are these not the accruals in that? where it started in 2012 at 50,000, went to 140, it's continually gone up. So this year, the total undisclosed compensation and the reports to Toronto City Council are $1.375 million, and by 2021, that's $2.65 million. In retirement allowance bonus not disclosed to Toronto City Council. It actually is disclosed in the AIF information that's provided to City Council with the annual information as per shareholder requirements. But uh, not disclosed in the document that comes before Executive Committee Because every year. this is not annual cash compensation, it's deferred, it's not paid. So, but it does total an additional compensation of 2.65 million. I, so then I, am I correct then if Mr. Haynes retires in each of these years, and he goes to 2021, his salary then, based on current salary plus inflation and bonus, and the bonus provision will bring him up to $3.815 million in 2021? I, these numbers are not our numbers, so I would have to check the actual accru accuracy of these numbers. I will go back and say, here's the chart, the bonuses to date, and if I take them beyond here, and I do them based on what the disclosure is that we can hardly read the fine print of, the number comes up if he retires in 2021 and takes all his bonuses then, $3.815 million? The, the information is actually readily available on the AIF and has been for over five years that cal does this calculation around the retirement allowance. I can't verify these numbers because they were not provided prior, so, but the information is directly so on if I, if I the them, AIF. So if I give them to you now, yeah, you Councilor can Schreiner, review them and disclose uh, it for you. Last question. We can My time back. was running before. I have one final question, if I could. Yes. I've written here compensations of local and uh, provincial utilities, ranging from 399000 to 666000 Why? is Toronto Hydro compensation so much different than that? And I don't believe any of or were any of these utilities used in your compensation comparisons. Uh, Mr. Chairman, perhaps I should deal with that. Um, I haven't seen these figures before, or, or this, this particular chart. Um, I'm, what uh, we did, and, and the councillor will know that, is we were asked to compare comparable utilities in any of our compensation. There were a number of comparable municipally owned utilities who were looked at, not 
publicly traded companies. There were four used, as the councillor knows, EPCOR, NMAX, Electra, and SAS Power. Uh, that's the basis on which the, the, we, we did our co comparables. Um, you can come up with all kinds of comparables to small towns, Sulaco, and a whole bunch of other places. Are these small but towns? All I'm saying is we were Are asked not to almost every other utility across Canada. Councillor. Yeah. Well, when he says Councilor, small towns, I don't take Councilor, BC as a small town. Councillor, that that's your last question. We can come back to you. I have a point of order from Councillor Holiday. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, I just wanted to uh, point out, I, there was a statement made by Councillor Shiner that um, the information wasn't before us that was shown on the screen. Uh, I just want to make sure Council knows that I think it's in attachment number four of the, uh, the electronic submission here, the AIF. And I just, it's confusing if it says that it's not here, but it, I could clearly see it. And your point of order is? Well, the point of order, I guess, is that uh, for the benefit of the debate, the councillor should be aware that um, there was a statement made that um, I feel might not be accurate and it's not helpful to the debate. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if that's a point of order, but uh, well, thank on, you, Councillor Holliday. And Councillor Shiner had uh, asked his of, last question. On a point of order. I have another point of order from Councillor Shiner. The same issue. Yeah. It was not disclosed in the information on an annual basis to Shiner, executive I, there committee was a, yeah. on the order. chart that we were given. Yeah, your point because of order? Because if it was, that's my point of order, to, because putting it somewhere else in a small document that was part of a 60-page public disclosure I, is not telling council about Shiner, it. I'm going to rule that both of your points of order were not actually points of order, but you did ask your last question, and we can come back to you if you wish, but I'd ask staff to respond to your last question and then we'll go on to our next uh, person on the list which is Councillor Mahevic after after staff respond to his question sorry Councillor Mahevic hold on a second staff or um, Mr. Chair uh, or Mr. Speaker one thing I would comment on is what the, the councillors raised is a very difficult situation we have as a company we are reporting under Securities Act legislation we have detailed reporting under that we have detailed reporting for the Ontario Energy Board. We have detailed reporting to, to the city as shareholder and other agencies and groups who have regulatory authority over our company. Um, it may be that in this case it wasn't as clear as it might have been, but the fact is the figures were disclosed. They are disclosed in publicly available documents, and they have been disclosed generally to the public. Um, it, I, I will take it as, as an understanding that that council might prefer us to set out the figure in a clear way. I'm happy to do that. We're not resisting that, but the fact is the numbers were disclosed and were publicly available. Thank you. Next on our list is Councillor Mahevic. Councillor Mahevic, you've got uh, five minutes. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, this is both to the city manager and uh, to the uh, chair of Hydro, and it's along the same, same vein. Um, this is not the, Councillor Shiner uh, is actually continuing a conversation that we've had, frankly, for several years. And uh, as I understand the state of the conversation, it is not, and because we are contract bound, we have, sorry, Councillor, we are contract bound with the uh, existing incumbent, uh, but the, there were policies to have been put in place by Hydro, by Toronto Hydro, on a go forward basis so that the next people who would be hired at the most senior levels of Hydro, Toronto Hydro, would have a different compensation structure and we would know of it. Has that happened? Councillor, that is currently under review right now. We're working with the city manager's office. You may recall there is a motion to that effect and we're currently working with the city manager's office to work toward a, 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 a policy that would be acceptable all round. Um, unfortunately, there have been some changes, as you know, in, in that office. We're hoping that with the new city manager taking place that we'll get on with that and get moving on it through the fall, and there will undoubtedly be a report to council. So you're working with uh, the city manager. City, manager's, city manager has carriage, and I think that's what the report actually says. Yep. City manager has carriage of that piece of work. That's correct, and we're okay, cooperating. Okay, then over here. Thank you. That. Thank you, councillor. Madam city manager. <coughs> 
given that this is not the first time, this is not the second year, this has been a multi-year request, and I'm not obviously tagging you uh, as the uh, temporary incumbent uh, uh, or the temporary person in that position. Um, is there a work plan? Who has that work plan? When can we see this? And or are we, and you can understand how we kind of feel at this end that there's, uh, this has either fallen between the cracks or there is a real lack of diligence in doing this work. So through the speaker, the executive committee did ask us to work with Hydro and look at their executive compensation uh, policy and that, that work is underway and we expect to be reporting out in the first part of 2019. 2019. Okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor Mahevic. We have Councillor uh, Pasternak. I'll turn on your mic. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, just to follow up to the uh, interim city manager's last comment, the, the request is actually for a gap analysis uh, due in the first quarter of 2019. Is, is that what we're going to see and are we on the road for that gap analysis? That's correct. We're undertaking that analysis so it will be part of our reporting out. Now the, I guess the leadership of Toronto Hydro was comparing, was referring to British Columbia as a small town. I'm just wondering whether there will be clarity from the city manager's office that the, the gap analysis will be comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges. So we're going to look at similar Canadian uh, corporations in terms of doing that analysis. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Fletcher. Going back up here. Don't start my time, please. I'm going to hear speaker. Okay. I'm just, uh, thank you, putting that back up. Okay. I just have that back up and I see the comparators. Just tell me again, please, who was the company that uh, you used? Pardon me, Councillor, I couldn't Which quite... company did you use to establish, which, to oh, establish the comparators? That, the comparables we were looking at was NMAX. No, which company did you use to establish the comparators? That's what I'm, I'm, I'm explaining. Yeah. The consulting company. Or the consulting company? Correct. I'm sorry, I thought you meant the, who we... Maybe I'm not speaking company. loud enough today. Which consulting company I'm did sorry. you use? Mercer's uh, was the consulting company that was used. Mercer's, thank you. When they came back to you, did they ever give the difference, <clears throat> I believe, that SAS Power uh, generates power? SAS Power is a provincial utility. Yes, and they have power generation under their... And other ones here have power generation. No, the other three do not. The other three do Counselor, not. Councillor, NMAX is a municipally owned. They have some generation, but not much. They're municipally owned. They have some MCOR, generation. MCOR is owned okay. by the city. And, and then Electra, which is the, uh, the Ontario one that's comparable, um, it, it's, it surrounds Toronto. And that's, uh, you know, it, took a, it was a merger of power. And screen. that's uh, 1,800 square kilometers, so almost three times the size of our... Well, no, it's one-third the size of our revenue. Correct, but it's for space and everything else. So I just have to ask, when I ask the city manager, I'm, maybe I'm fuzzy, but I recall the city council had asked a number of times to Toronto Hydro to understand the compensation for the CEO of Toronto Hydro. And we were told we had to ask the Hydro board. Is that correct? That's correct. First, through the speaker, first we'd ask the hydro board. That the former, yes. Mr. Wallace asked the hydro board. That's correct. And was denied the information direct and said it had to come as a request to the hydro board. So there was a request, and there was a request to the board. But is there some reason why at that time uh, you and the city and others didn't understand that the entire compensation for Mr. Haynes is actually supposedly contained in every annual general <clears throat> financial report to you, to executive, as we're hearing this morning. So we're looking at all of the executive compensations. I don't believe it's just for the CEO. My question is not that. Okay. 
I've heard from Toronto Hydro, and I believe it was disclosed this morning, that in the documents that were presented to uh, Council, through Executive, that everything is in there. So I'll, cor I'll corroborate that. Every single penny is disclosed somewhere in the documents that you've presented. Is that correct? That's correct to the best of my knowledge. We, well, we let's not, ask it. Because we, for, Councillor. So that's fine. To the best of your knowledge is good enough for me. legislation, we have an obligation to the OEB to disclose beside the Council. Mr. Fletcher, please allow for an answer. I can hardly hear him. Okay, Councillor Fletcher, please. Yes, please allow Thank the you. staff to, to speak and please don't interrupt while he's answering a question, please. I just re would require a short answer. Is everything in? It really is yes, it's in, or no, it's not yeah, but in. Don't, please don't interrupt. Thank you, I won't. Okay. In or out? Yes, the answer to that question is yes. There is public disclosure of the full compensation package of the CEO. Thank you. So I'm asking, uh, the, since that's the case, when council asked for that, is there a reason why uh, we were told we had to ask for that through the board when apparently it is available annually in your disclosures and your financial statements to the city? Through the speaker, I just want to clarify that what uh, Executive Committee and Council asked us to do was to look at also, in addition to the current compensation, to comparators and looking at what opportunity, opportunities there would, there would be to bring the executive compensation in line with city policies. So it's that piece of the work that we're still undertaking. But the, I think, it, maybe I'm not being clear, but I understood we'd ask to know the numbers for financial compensation. We'd ask Toronto Hydro as the city council. Um, then we were told that city council has asked the board. We can't ask directly to the, to the uh, corporation. And I'm saying, nonetheless, despite all of those requests, apparently what you're telling us today is in every time you disclose financially, annually, every single penny of compensation is in there, might be in different places, but it's all in there. That's correct, Councillor, it is. And it's a requirement of securities legislation, requirement of the OEB, and it's a requirement of, in our reporting to the city. That's correct, it's all there. And, and so my question would be, Councilor why was Fletcher. that not told? That Councillor Fletcher, that was your last but question. But why didn't you tell us that it's already there Councilor, when we asked? Councillor Fletcher, that was your last question. Councillor Davis. Um, thank you, Speaker. To the city manager, I was shocked, as I'm sure everyone else here was, uh, to see these graphs. I wonder if you could put them on the screen. Um, and the hydro staff were not able to confirm these. And I'm wondering if, are you able to confirm these salary and additional benefit payouts? Through the speaker, I haven't had an opportunity to look at these graphs. What I can tell you is that on attachment four, the annual uh, information form on page 62. Yes, I've been looking for it. And I haven't 64, been able to find so 64, page 64 has the retirement allow allowances. I haven't been able to look at these numbers and compare it to the graphs, but I can tell you that the information is disclosed. I, I'm, not, oh. I'm not disputing about, I hear, I've heard it six times, the information is there. Is this accurate? Is this true? Is this what Mr. Haynes is going to leave with? Four million dollars. This is the first I'm seeing of these graphs, so I would just need time to compare but that I, those numbers match what's in here. That's all I'm saying. I, I really do think this should step down, be stepped down until someone can confirm that these numbers are accurate. What I'd suggest, Councillor, through you, Madam Speaker, is that we will deal with that issue uh, with the city manager's office uh, at, when our report coming up. We don't think these, I mean, I've not seen those numbers before, so I can't respond to them. 
but maybe, maybe I should ask Mr. Haynes directly. What does he expect? He's, he's sitting here. I don't know. Well, Councillor Davis, so, Councillor Davis, I, you, you walked away, so your time. You, no, you, no, no. An answer. There was an answer that no, continued. No, uh, I am not going to ask Mr. Haynes. No. Okay. Thank you. I want someone, though, to confirm this. Okay. Thank you. And I, ho I wonder if we could step away. I've been here many, many years, and I've never seen the information presented in this way, and it's shocking to me as uh, a director of this thank you. Thank shareholder, you. number one shareholder. Thank you. Yes, she, she walked away. She's finished. Counts, um, yeah. Mayor, Mayor Tory. Yes, I just had a question, Madam Speaker, that relates a bit to history and to putting this into some perspective. Uh, could uh, somebody from Hydro uh, talk to us about uh, the, these arrangements, uh, whether it's displayed properly this way or some other way, uh, and I'm prepared certainly to accept the word of the Chair about it being a full disclosure. Wh when was the contract entered into that has these provisions in it uh, that, uh, that are laid out one way or another in the public disclosure documents or on these graphs and charts? Thank you for your question, Mr. Mayor. I believe there, it was certainly predated the time I was on the board. I know that. Um, I believe it may be six or seven years ago, but I, I don't have the exact. Uh, I'd be happy to provide that information, but I believe it's quite some years ago, and it certainly predated my involvement on the board. But and there is a cap. And there is a. Abby Lethbridge just pointed out there is a cap on this. It's not an unlimited. Situation. I don't think the figures are strictly correct, but we will be back to council with a full figure with the city manager's office uh, as we go through this study, and uh, council will get a full picture. And, and I'd just like, if I could, Madam Chair, to, through you to the uh, Chair of Hydro, uh, confirm that you have said today that uh, if there's a better way to disclose the same information in a more consolidated, readable uh, fashion for the reader so that the all the information is still there, same information, but presented differently that you've undertaken to take a look at that? <laughs> yes, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Mayor, you're absolutely right. Uh, one of the problems I've had over the years with uh, various security filings uh, uh, through my practice and through business is often, while the figures are usually in the documents, it's often as a shareholder difficult to ferret through them all. This is obviously an item that requires some clarification and council can have the assurance that we will make sure they're, 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 it's clearly set out so that members of council are not in the dark or, 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 or find it confusing to go through the document. The figures are there. It's obviously a presentation problem, and we'll deal with it. And, and one final thing, Madam Speaker, if I could. Uh, may, may I ask the representatives of Hydro, because I'm sure they could call somebody back at the office and determine the date that that contract was entered into, and perhaps even bring us the signature page of the, who the signatories to it were, because I think it's important for us to understand in the context of things that will be said here about that contract um, that I believe it is true to say it well predates uh, your uh, uh, being the chair and well predates a lot of the people in here uh, who weren't even here at the time, whatever people may think of the contract. Correct. We'll be happy to provide that information to your office, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Are there any further questions? No. Okay. Um, speakers. Okay. Councillor Shiner, you held the item down. I have a motion. I don't know if the clerk has it ready yet. Okay, but just wait one sec. So, Madam Speaker, that I am moving this motion as a direction Toronto Hydro as 
those were the utilities that I found that have either greater distribution, greater responsibilities, include generation, include local delivery, et cetera. And I do not believe that the comparators that were being used at Toronto Hydro were ones that were, uh, in my opinion, uh, the proper comparators to use. Uh, in regards, and Mayor Tory, Mayor Tory. So, Mayor Tory. Councillor Fletcher, Mayor Tory. Sorry, if my time is wrong, but you asked a question as to when. The figures that I go all came from public documentations. The original bonus started in 2012, the first retirement allowance. Under the previous term and not under the current chair, not under Mr. McFadden, it was under Mr. Copeland. The second one actually came in during this term of council in 2014, and it's the greater one. It was the one on my charts that was gray. And that came in by uh, Mr. Williams, who was chair until then. Mr. McFadden, in due respect, did not take the chairman's role until 2016, according to my records. But each and every number that I have, my office had to find by researching it through all the public disclosures and the 60 or 70 pages of the fine print that you have. I am extremely disappointed in that because we asked the simple question over many years. How does the compensation compare of our senior staff to other similar utilities? And if you just want to talk about the number of customers, well, so you have a condo building with 300 people in that, and you got three of them on the street, one feed to the building, well, that's 1,000 people, but that's only three feeds, when some of these are much greater. And all I'm looking is for fairness in compensation. And I don't think we've had the fullness of the information in front of us. It was extremely disappointed when we actually found in the back pages of this, buried here in page 64, these allowances. And then we had to go onto the internet to find them every time because we were always told we have to go in camera for any of the stuff, and yet it was always public information. Now, I'm never averse to people getting fair pay for fair work. But I believe we have a responsibility to the taxpayers and the ratepayers of the City of Toronto just to be sure that the compensation of our senior executives is in line with the compensation of others. And I believe in f that we should get the fullness of a report in front of us. And when we get a report that doesn't include that, which was what is, was in front of us at Executive Committee, and it said a total compensation of $1,087,000, million, $1, million it doesn't come down to the fact that these additional bonuses are there that total $2.65 million. And in a very short period of time, by 2021, if Mr. Haynes wishes to retire, the earnings that year can be $3.8 million. I don't know anyone, city manager, I don't think would make that in their life. I mean, do you know how long it takes to get to those kind of pays? I don't believe that's right when people are getting these huge hydro bills with their, don't want to turn their air conditioners on. They're afraid of what they're paying and the compensation of our senior staff, I do not believe, meets the compensation of similar organizations, which we have been asking for for years. And we also asked to cap the maximum bonus, earned bonus that any executive will have at 25% and the president and CEO earns 100%. Now, if I extrapolate the $3.815 million and based on public information, if you terminate the CEO, he gets two years' pay. So if you terminate the CEO in 2021, he earns all his bonuses, $3.8 million, and then another million dollars on top of that. So it's $4.8 million if he's terminated then. I don't know who really authorized or gave full thought to these contracts. And I just don't believe they're fair. So what I'm asking is that we instruct the board to go back and give us some comparisons and come back here next year and let's see where the compensation is and do everything possible to make the pay of our executives comparable to what the pay is of other executives with similar jobs and responsibilities. Thank you. We do have some questions for you. Councillor Holliday, three minutes, clarification. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, through you to Councillor Shiner, um, I know as a, as a board member a little bit how the compensation system works and I know how important the comparables are in choosing the right ones. 
Uh, but there's implications. If, if these comparables drove up the salary of the executives, do you, would you still support your motion? First of all, I would. And second okay. of all, the list that I had up there, when I looked at almost every similar utility across the country, anyone similar, Saskatchewan Power, 481,000, Manitoba Hydro, 466, Hydro Quebec, 660, BC Hydro, 528, the province of Alberta, 682, Quebec, 543, Ottawa Hydro, very similar to us, 399. Thank you. Um, would you support giving uh, the executives um, additional compensation like stock options if that was found in any of these places? I don't believe any public utility. I don't know. Municipally owned utility can even do that because there's no stocks to give. I have, though in answering a question, I have no problem with performance bonuses. I support them over and did at Build Toronto. I supported them at CREATO and I continue to support them based on at Toronto Hydro. I have no problem with that. I'm not talking just about stock option, about a bonus provision. So similar is a very important word in your motion. Can you explain to me the different uh, comparators that you used in determining which of these uh, companies to choose as the comparison list? Did you look at you know, capital? Did you look at number of employees? Did you look at number of customers? Did you look at um, you know, gross revenue? <coughs> what, were the, what were the elements that you used to infer that these were appropriate comparisons to Toronto Hydro? Well, first of all, for what I could, and I answer that because we are not allowed to have the public information about who the comparators were. We only have the name, it's a comparator. We aren't even given who the comparator is. But I find it, you know, I'm, I'm a very simple person, really, when it comes down to it. I try and stay at higher levels and deal with things that I can understand and not get always drawn into the weeds of it. But the list I gave you and the responsibilities of organizations that do very great areas, much greater than ours, so they may have less customers but, high, but serve much greater areas. Some of them do district not only distribution uh, provincially, but they do local distribution. Some of them do generation. I mean, they all have different projects within their portfolio. So it's important for you as a member of the board to find that. From my perspective, when I have all of these, I can't see how you found anybody that was as high as as that was Six as high. Okay, okay, count, Councilor Shiner. No, no, I'm, I'm ask answering the question. question. I can't yeah, find so how uh, you wrong. found anybody. So my last question is, is, do you think the council could benefit from some expert advice from somebody that knows human resources and the companies, uh, such as through the city manager's office, to really figure out okay, which are the right Councilor comparators? Okay, Councillor Holliday, your time is up. I know. And my, my answer to that is, I have been striving to see that. And I will tell you that I don't really want to be the one to bring that here. I know all the individuals because I was on the board at Toronto Hydro. I don't want to be the one to bring the issues here. I expected it to be of the board. Thank, thank but you. When a, I'm answering the question, Madam Speaker. Yes. But, but when on a continual basis between our staff and the board at Toronto Hydro, we haven't had that information. And then I had my staff go through the documents and find it. I felt it was important to bring it here and find a way to finally get a resolution to it. If you have a better suggestion, Councillor, I am more than willing to hear it. Okay, thank you. Count, uh, Mayor Tory. Oh, sorry, uh, yes. Uh, sorry to inter interrupt Council the debate, Saul. Speaker, yes. but I just wanted to acknowledge that we have some visitors here in the chambers today. Uh, we have 39 students and four teachers who came all the way from the hometown of my grandfather Shanghai, China. Uh, these are the students and teachers of Pudong Fu Shan Zhang, sorry, Fu Shan Zhang Da Xuaxie Primary School. Huan Ying Dai Zha. So I just wanted to say welcome in Huan Ying and welcome to Toronto. Enjoy your stay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Tory, 
question? Just, just had a couple of questions of the councillor, Madam Speaker. Uh, first of all, um, I believe uh, this, uh, the, all this detail is pursuant to an employment agreement, and I was asking some questions of the chair of Hydro about this. And uh, I respect the fact you've done as much work and your staff at looking at all of this and trying to make uh, better sense of it. Uh, is it is all of this pursuant to the terms of an employment agreement between Mr. Haynes, the chief executive officer, and the corporation? Yes. It is, to my understanding, and one was entered into in 2012, previous council, and one was entered into 2014 during this session of council. Right, well, just on that, uh, so, so I, don't, I don't believe there's a second employment agreement. You there are, are two. It says it in the public disclosure. Right. There are two bonus provisions that were, or uh, additional compensation. I want compensation. to clarify about what is the date of the second contract, then, uh, the second contract that you've said was entered into in the term of this council. This council began on December 1st, 2014. I don't have the dates. Okay, um, and then the, the date. I, and I might be an error, Mayor, so I would have to double check. Okay, thank you. Well, we're we're going to get that information. I hope from Toronto Hydro uh, uh, very shortly. So, but it, I know that it was under the the uh, the first was a, when 2012 was under Mr. Claire Copeland as chair. The second one was under Mr. Williams. Nine, none of them were under Mr. McFadden. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Menawong to speak. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, firstly, I just want to make a few general comments. I'm on the, I'm on the board of Hydro, and um, I can tell you that um, it's the best board that I had 12 assignments this term at Council. It's the best board that I've been on. It's a high-functioning board, um, aside, including, well, not aside from, including the councillors Ainsley and, and Holiday. We have some of the smartest people, the most talented people on that board, and we're really lucky to have them. I'd also like to, to speak to the management. We have a, we have a great management team. We, we, you know, we might argue about salary, salary comp, but they are, I think, and I think the board really feels strongly about this, uh, they're a high-functioning uh, management team, um, and often over the time that, uh, for the last number of years, um, this council has treated uh, Toronto Hydro like a piggy bank, uh, breaking it open on a regular basis and still requesting them to do things that are, by, any, by most hydro uh, electricity utilities, that would be, seem to be quite unreasonable, yet they, 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 they continue to move along. Um, so uh, generally, then now specifically, um, what I would like to say this is about the salaries. Uh, you know, I see two pieces to this about the discussion First is the process question about the disclosure of information. So there was, all the information was disclosed. I think the point that is being made is um, that it wasn't all disclosed in an obvious place, especially the, 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 the um, any, any funds associated with, with for pensions. Um, so I think that's a, that's a fair comment. I think that the information is in the AIF, it may not be easily found. But what I can tell you that, and, and I, I have done this, um, when I was looking for this information, all I did was phone up Hydro and ask them what, where this information could be found, and they found it for me. They're not an organization that, is, that, that, that will hide this information from you if you just call them up and ask. So for example, um, if a counselor wanted to know what the cumulative uh, benefits for, or any of these questions, all you had to do was phone up either Anthony or the head of human resources um, they would have given that to you. Now, just briefly in terms of the substantive piece, in terms of because this this seems to be a lot of this discussion is talking about uh, compensation packages. I can tell you there's a there's a, there's a disconnect between I think some of the uh, board members and some of the um, pardon me some of the the uh, councillors on the board and some of the more let's call them uh, board members from the corporate world. And, um, you know, we're trying to square, I, I mean, here's, here's the question for you. How do you pay a guy over a million dollars who runs a monopoly? Um, you know, it's, it's an interesting question. Um, and could you get someone just as good when you pay them less? And the, the example that I, that I always like to use is, is, I'll take the example of Peter Wallace. Do you think Peter Wallace could want, run Hydro and learn, learn how to run Hydro and do a pretty good job at it? My answer would be yes, but he just he gets a fraction of what, you know, the, 
current president and CEO gets. Then you talk to all the, the folks on the board who come from the corporate world, and they say, no, 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 that you, you can't do that. You won't get anybody any, you won't, won't get anybody any good. So we've gonna, we've, we, um, we, we're going to have to come to ground on that at some point in time, sometime in the future. But I, I will tell you, and, you know, and, and no one decided to go into camera, but I suspect that uh, in camera it, it would come as no surprise to anybody that you can't change the, the current CEO's compensation package because that would, that would be easily, that would, it, talk to any uh, labor lawyer, they would, that, would, that would be constructive dismissal, right? So anyone who's trying to say we're going to, you know, we're going to reduce the salary of, of the CEO, we're going to, we should do it today, we can't, you know, we, we'd be paying out far more in, in, uh, in, in legal fees and, 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 uh, and, and severance uh, than, than, than would be worth it. So that's, that's the reality of it. But I would, and, and, if, and if this council wants to do this, and, and this information is going to come back in the next term, we can do it. Um, uh, we can do that through a shareholder direction. And that's the time that we should be considering it. But there are certain consequences to it. We should take a careful decision. And part of that decision it would be to get the information that uh, Councillor Shiner is requesting. Let's see what's all, you know, all these other compare, well, all these other uh, um, companies, uh, what their comp packages are and whether they're fairly comparable. Um, but there's no question that, that these type of salaries are Thank very, you, uh, top of mind in the public eye. And, it's a reasonable discussion we should be having. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Fletcher to speak. Yes, um, I'm just going to pick up off of our Deputy Mayor saying it's no secret that these uh, discussions are in top of mind in the public. We just had a provincial election and lo and behold, the CEO and the board were all fired by the incoming, incoming Premier. So. I'm not moving any motions of that nature, but I do think that compensation is on people's minds. And they want to make sure that it's fair. They want to make sure it's been done right. And uh, we do have councillors that sit on that board. At the end of the day, City Council is the shareholder. We are the shareholder of Toronto Hydro. We are the shareholder of Toronto Community Housing. And I will be supporting Councillor Shiner's motion. I think it's fair to have some other comparators looked at. And I know Mercer's, but when you're generating power and you're looking after natural gas, it is a little different. And somebody might find out exactly the same thing and say, you've got aging infrastructure. Uh, here's your difficulties and problems. So yes, compensation levels have to be at a certain rate. And also, if for any reason, our current CEO should leave, I'd certainly like to understand what the baseline is and to be able to assist the board in those deliberations. I really do believe that is the role of the shareholder at times when things might change. So I don't want to do anything radical. I just want to set the stage if there's any changes that it would be very disappointing if you hadn't done what Councillor McMahon always calls your homework and have looked at a whole number of other things, understanding that there are some concerns here. And I'm going to tell you what my biggest concern here is here now. This is probably the third time that we've had this conversation. The city manager, who's not here now, our former city manager, and so there is no institutional memory with our interim city manager, and that's the problem with so much change at the upper levels of our senior management team, Ask Toronto Hydro Corporation, please send us the information for the compensation package for your CEO. We'd asked him to ask them. I believe you all remember that. And what we got back was a letter saying, I'm sorry, we're not disclosing that to you, Mr. Wallace, CEO of the City of Toronto, City Manager. You have to have your City Council ask the board. So then we had another long debate about the City Council asking the board and Councillor Holliday felt that we shouldn't do that and that actually didn't pass. Even though we had instructed, this council had instructed the City Manager to ask for that information. So here's why I'm concerned. 
It's a mul two multi-billion dollar corporations. A simple ask turned down by the corporation, and I'm looking at the chair of the board. Perhaps you didn't even know that was turned down by the corporation, Mr. Chair, but it was. So that should be of concern to you if you didn't know that because the city manager had asked. And if I had time to make a motion, that would be my motion. I would have liked to know if you to report on that. And perhaps I'll ask you after. But subsequent to that, what really concerns me is we've been told today that we have all of that information at our fingertips in the reports that go to executive. They're not in one single space or place. They are sprinkled throughout based on the nature of that compensation. So if it is actually in the documents that are provided to City Council and the Executive Committee on an annual basis, and I'm looking right at the chair, I am having a very hard time understanding why that wasn't the answer to Mr. Wallace that you have all of it and here it is. I'm very, very concerned. Not so much about the money, but how does the city manager ask the corporation for information and not be told well, Mr. City Manager, you have that already. We provide that to you annually, and it's in the executive report. That, to me, does not appear as a very high-functioning corporation that can't tell its own ask from the uh, city manager that they have that information already. I'm extremely disappointed in that, but as I said, I'm extremely concerned as well. And I'll be asking the chair directly when I see Thank you, Councillor Fletcher. Councillor Mahevic. Yes, thank you very much. I, I rise in support of uh, Councillor <coughs> uh, Shiner's motion, noting that uh, we had already made the request for uh, this kind of request for several uh, years now. The comparables that he's asking for are hydro comparables across the country. We have already on record, and I confirmed it with the general manager, uh, with our city manager. Uh, that uh, comparables within the civic sector are also to be part of that study. Uh, to me, um, in, a, in a world where people have to fight like crazy to get a wage increase between up to $14 and may, might not even get it to $15 in this province, what people are concerned about is the disparity in wages. And all the studies, all the academic studies that I've looked at that shows that, that folks in the bottom 20% are at this level and their salaries relative and their ability to afford living in Toronto are going down and if, uh, salaries uh, at the upper 10% are going up uh, way beyond the rate of inflation and that somehow we as a city have to address it with hydro but also across the corporation, across our agency boards and commission. That's a task that needs urgent attention. And so um, uh, my... Uh, my frustration is, is that this has taken us not months, but years, years to get the report. So I'll certainly be waiting uh, if, uh, if I'm uh, lucky enough to be here uh, next year, uh, waiting for that report and for us to do some good policy development across, uh, across uh, the, the city, Toronto Hydro including, included, and particularly Toronto Hydro since their, their senior compensation levels are way out of whack. I recognize as well that we may, we don't have an ability to impact current contracts and this is more on a go forward basis for any new contracts that happen with Toronto Hydro and with any agency board or commission or city employee that, that uh, we, uh, we hire. We have to find a way to bring compensation levels a little more uh, together uh, for people at the low end and people at the high end. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Councillor Davis to speak. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Um, I too will uh, support Councillor Shiner's motion. Um, I understand there may be some amendment required, but uh, I believe absolutely that it would be irresponsible on our part not to look uh, at the additional 
hydro corporations that Councillor Shiner has outlined. Um, <laughs> we have consistently, as Councillor Fletcher has said, asked for this information over the last years. And I have finally, I've spent this entire time going through the information, annual information form, and I have finally found uh, where the additional bonuses are identified. And yes, indeed, they're clear. They're clear and they're shocking. Um, there's a retirement allowance here of 625,000 and they're increased annually from 2018 to 2020 by another $125,000. It's uh, no employee at the City of Toronto now gets a retirement allowance. It's a, um, a benefit that was removed from our employees many, many years ago. Um, I, I think if the people of Toronto were aware that the head of our Hydro Corporation will leave here in 2020 with over $4 million, um, they too would be shocked. So while I understand somehow over these years this employment contract has been signed and uh, there is no ability for us to amend it at this point, we should be looking uh, and be prepared for any incoming CEO uh, and to have the compensation package prepared uh, so that it reflects the values of this uh, chamber and it reflects uh, due diligence in terms of uh, the research that we have to do to get full, uh, full information. So thank you, Councillor Shiner, for pursuing this and for continuing to pursue this. And I hope that we will all uh, unanimously approve this motion so that we get the fullest possible information before uh, and to support the compensation review uh, that we hope will come forward with the assistance of the city manager. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Holliday. Okay, just one sec. Okay, Councillor Holliday to speak. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I just wanted to offer some comments. I don't support Councillor Shiner's motion, and I believe I come with um, some, uh, some background on this. Uh, I have served on the Hydro Board and had to make decisions on human resource proposals, including understanding compensation at the Board. It's true, like any corporation, Toronto Hydro, and heck, even just like the government here, the Toronto Public Service, when you set someone's salary, you have to take comparables into mind. And I know that Toronto Hydro does that. And in fact, it's a very involved process, especially when you get into the executive level. There's a lot of factors that go into deciding who the appropriate comparables are. Um, in fact, they get help to do that. And you look at different industries. You look at different companies, industrial companies that may be similar in size. You look at the dollars that flow through, you look at the number of customers, you look at the type of capital work that they do. And you put all of that into a funnel in a matrix and you try to figure out, you know, who are the companies that are out there that we would hire our executives from and who are the companies that are competing with us that might steal them away. So you've got to find this balance point. Um, and they do that, we do that. Toronto Hydro has a policy on that and there's a rule set to make sure that things are stable and this, this, these compensations are reviewed from time to time and those rules are refreshed to make sure that we're using fresh information and we're making wise decisions. Unfortunately with Councillor Shiner's list, I really have no idea what the effect is. It may drive compensation way down, it may drive it way up. It may drive it down on the CEO, but drive it way up on the other executives. We actually don't know because no one's actually done the work to go through the investigation as to whether or not these are appropriate comparisons to what Toronto Hydro is. Yes, they may be municipally owned, but that's really only a, one factor. There might be other factors like size and complexity and dollar value. And as I mentioned, how does that compare to general industry? We don't know. We don't know is actually the problem. That's a very crisp direction. It would be one thing to request that people take a look at these. It would be one thing to signal that, you know, th this, is, this is hopefully uh, some comparators that, you know, we'd like to keep into consideration. 
But this is quite prescriptive, and this could actually affect the change that we don't know what the result is. It may destabilize things, it may stabilize things, it may actually drive the salaries up. And so, you know, I understand where Councillor Shiner is coming from. He's got some obvious concerns. But the right way to do it is not to issue a direction on the floor of council without any understanding of what this is or any reporting. You know, invite uh, Councillor Shiner maybe to put his name in for the board on the next round of council. We could use really good, thoughtful people there that have some ideas on how compensation could work. But have Councillor Shiner also have the discussion with a, with a knowledgeable human resource consultant that understands the industry and understands the effect of these and understands all the layers of complexity there is into choosing what an appropriate comparable is. All I can say is that it's not an easy process. It's not willy-nilly. It's not just sort of sitting and checking off some, some check boxes and say, here you go. Um, there is a lot of governance that put is put around this. Not because it's just that we want to see the corporation run well, but we have that duty um, to the ratepayers, uh, to the taxpayers of the city, to the owner of the city. I think everyone wants to make sure that you've got a company that is, uh, you know, is affordable for people to, to be customers of, but also stable, because that's the city's investment. We, re we rely on them as a, for a dividend. And you have to take into all the considerations to having a successful company to make sure that you pick the right people and you retain the right people that are in charge of it. So with that, I hope you think very carefully about the seriousness of what's been put forward. It looks like a very popular and, and uh, interesting idea and, and, and you know, uh, understand that maybe people appreciate and want to see executive salaries be lower because that's a populist opinion. But I would invite you really to think very carefully about the effect of this and actually the unknown effect because we really just don't have the advice around it. And be careful because we're playing with fire. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Shiner on a point of order. Point of privilege. Pri yes. Well, my colleague was saying if I would join the board, and maybe I would lose, understand it, maybe I would understand how a compensation package. Yes, I've been on the board. Yes, I understand how they work. Yes, I've had the debate with them. And yes, I'm fully knowledgeable about them. And challenging that I might not be or saying that in public. <coughs> I don't think it's appropriate. Okay, thank you. Yes, Councillor Holliday. Uh, that's totally not what I said. Um, and I would invite you know, Councillor okay, Schreiner so to review the tape. What I said was the board could use great people like him, and I hope he puts his name well, that in. Part I, that part I like. Okay, well, thank you. Come on, let's, let's move along here. Let's move along. Councillor Mamlidi to speak. You know, I, I listened to the... Uh, to the questioning and, and the dialogue in the debate, and uh, I almost feel compelled uh, to stand up um, and defend Councillor Shiner uh, because I know Councillor Shiner and I have for almost 30 years. No. And I, I've got to tell you that if there's anybody that, that understands numbers and understands this place and understands the boards and agencies any better, uh, it's Councillor Shiner. And, and me personally, when Councillor Shiner does stand up and starts questioning uh, reports and what they're about and, and, uh, and the numbers, uh, I do listen. Because more than once, uh, he has often, uh, in fact, often, he's come up with issues and, and dialogue and problems and problem solving uh, that most of us wouldn't even, wouldn't even venture into. And as, as much as I appreciate everybody uh, in this chamber, including myself, I don't think there's anybody that would read these kinds of reports and do the numbers like Councillor Shiner. And, 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 and I have to say this because I think we, we quickly forget what happened in the provincial election. There's a new uh, leader uh, provincially for a reason. And I'm going to say it's because of the issues with hydro. And it's because of the issues with these kinds of deals that are made that got a new premier elected wanting change in this province. And so stop questioning uh, the logic and the reasoning behind Councillor Shiner. I think most of us need to appreciate what he's trying to do. And if anything, he's brought some light to an issue that most of you and myself didn't even know about. Thank you. Councillor Shiner, point of privilege. Uh, the mayor has brought to my attention that both of the salaries, uh, the um, 
retirement allowance were brought under Mr. Claire Copeland and not under this term of council. So I wanted to be sure that I clarified that. And secondly, to my colleagues, in speaking to the solicitor, there's some slight changes to the motion to give direction but not uh, do anything that we wouldn't want to do. It's simply to look at the comparators along with others they may use. So you're amending your motion? The wording was the, the um, city solicitor came to me to make sure that my motion itself would anyway have any particular uh, impact. So, so on you are amend you're, you're amending it. You're uh, amending the wording. We corrected the, the wording. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Councillor Shiner. Um, Councillor Kelly to speak. Thank you, Speaker. Um, there's a constant reference to uh, Councillor Shiner's motion, but I've I haven't seen it. Yeah, I just uh, and I don't know, I don't know whether it's been uh, distributed yet. Um, ask if um, the uh, if he wants the uh, my understanding that's been communicated to me by others is that in essence, this is an attempt to uh, to amend the compensation package halfway through the contract. In other words. Uh, there's a contract in place, and uh, Councillor Shiner is urging us, I guess, to ask the board to reopen that contract to amend the, pa the, uh, the compensation package. Um, but I can't comment on the accuracy of that interpretation, uh, uh, Speaker, because I haven't seen the, uh, the motion itself. But if that's an accurate assessment of... Uh, Councillor Shiner's motion, it doesn't look good on the city. I understand concerns about the scale of uh, executive uh, salaries and bonuses, but, um, Speaker, you, you know, it's, it doesn't look good on a government if a contract can't be honored. If we want the best executives possible, if we're looking to provide hydro with the best executives that we can find, then we have to compete in that marketplace. And if we can't compete in the marketplace, we're not going to get potentially the best executives that we can. And when you get them, Speaker, then you have people who not only can deliver what's needed now, but can anticipate what is needed down the line. So from that perspective, Speaker, I will not be supporting Councillor Scheider's motion, and I would hope that there would be other people in this place that would understand the importance of honoring a contract, and if not honored, the implications it has for us going forward in attracting the very best executives that are out there. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor DiGiorgio. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, I believe that the motion, the way it's been revised, is, is okay and can be supported. And I think it basically says two things. First of all, it expresses a concern that Councillor um, Shiner has expressed to this uh, to Council that in fact the salaries may not be in keeping with what might be appropriate salaries. But more importantly, I think it basically says to the board, we are relying on you to do the, the necessary review and determine whether in fact some of the arguments that have been put, put forward by uh, Councillor Kelly should be used as reasons why the uh, compensation package should not be changed or leave it to the board to come up with arguments why the compensation package ought to be modified slightly. So I think the motion, the way it's worded right now, accomplishes those things, so I would urge that people support it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Councillor Desette to speak. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I just realized I was going to say I will be quick, but I won't say that. Um, I also want a clarification on this motion because I think it's very important for people to 
uh, understand what Councillor Shino is doing. So I just spoke to a city solicitor. There is going to be some new wording. My understanding is now that we're not looking to change anything at this point in time, because you can't. But we want to review what is there now, so when and if we have a new person in that position, we can look at it with a different light, compare it to the other um, large cities which are similar to us. So I just want to confirm for anyone who wasn't quite understanding what the motion was, is to be reviewed, get us ready for the next person when and if that may happen. Thank you. And that was quick. Thank you. Do we have any further speakers before we go to the last speaker? That don't have, okay, so the last speaker, Mayor Tory. Well, Madam Speaker, um, I'm torn on, on how to vote on this, frankly, and I'll get to that, but I want to first of all start off by saying something because there was uh, maybe the slightest implication, and I want to, I want to just make sure that, that it is an implication that is not left with the council and with those who are watching our proceedings, that in some way or other, this current board of hydro you know, either sort of deliberately didn't put information in a clear manner and whatever. I've been through this as a director. I was, in fact, chair of the compensation committee at, of the Rogers board before I had to leave that board when I got elected. This, the, the disclosure here is among the most complex disclosure that ever happens, short of financings that go on and so forth. And no matter how you put it out, there's always somebody who says you didn't put it out in enough of a way that led people to a conclusion. But that, look, leave that, be that as it may, even the chair has acknowledged this morning that uh, they, they will find ways to do better and make this compensation, uh, this uh, disclosure of compensation clearer. The point I want to make is, I, have, I haven't been around for a lot of hydro boards. In fact, this is the only one I've been around for, but I will say this. I have not seen, and I had a hand with others here in making sure the private citizens who were put on that board, including the chair, were people of the utmost integrity and the utmost competence. Look at who they are, go look it up. And you've got people there that are probably of the highest quality that you've ever had on the board of this big, very important uh, publicly reporting corporation. And I'll say as well, I will tell you from my own personal knowledge that the three councillors that have been over there, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Ainsley and Councillor Holliday, have been as diligent as directors I've ever seen in my quite cons considerable history as a corporate director. They've come to me and asked me questions about uh, things that are going on over there and just in terms of trying to test their own judgment as fiduciaries. And I just want to say that to me, I mean, this has been a board that has been, been the, uh, above and beyond any questioning of their approach or their integrity from the standpoint, including efforts, I think, to try and be more transparent. The second thing I want to say is this all relates, and I think it's very important because it relates to the comments made by Councillor uh, Mamaliti, uh, to a contract that was entered into and any sort of changes or modifications to it with regard to bonus payments were made. The first contract I found out since I asked, May 27, 2010, under Chair Claire Copeland, and the second, May, March 27, 2013, under Chair uh, Claire Copeland. Uh, and the Councillor Chiner mentioned something about Mr. Williams, I don't know. But the bottom line is these are contracts entered into uh, under the following. Previous council, previous mayor, previous board, previous chair, and I don't know if I've left anything out. And so it's in the past, and I find myself in no position to judge. But if you want an indication of my thoughts about it, and this is no commentary on the job done by the current incumbent in the CEO's position. Uh, he oversees a corporation that sends us a check for $75 million every year, and that dividend has been no done nothing but grow. And certainly when I was a chair of, uh, of the HR committee at a big corporation, in fact, I've done it more than once, um, that certainly is something you look at, which is a track record. And you look at market conditions. And, and, and so it's the past, but if you want to know my own feelings about it, I was the one who led in the initiative to uh, ask the uh, city manager uh, via the executive committee to take a look at compensation, and I indicated the view that I thought that those levels needed to be perhaps better managed than they are today. And so that comes to the, to the, uh, the fact that that work is being done, and, and one of the reasons I'm hesitant to vote for Councillor Shiner's uh, motion today is because the work is being done by our city staff, and this is what we do so often. We ask for a report, and I don't, I'm not disrespecting of Councillor Shiner. I respect highly the fact he did the work, and as Councillor Mamaliti said, he's had people burrowing into all this and figuring it all out and putting it in a more easily understood uh, uh, format, assuming it's accurate. But we ask somebody to do a report, our city manager, they're spending time doing it, they're going to report back as soon as they can, and then we have another motion that in effect sort of says, well, yeah, while you're doing that, let's send over a direction to tell you what to do. And then there's the second question, which is the fiduciary responsibility of directors over there, and I think this is what Councillor Holliday is getting at, 
they have, those directors, a fiduciary responsibility, and while we're entitled to send a shareholder direction, I'm not sure that's exactly what this is. This is a motion from the council, and the council also, or the city, happens to be the shareholder, but if there's a way we want to do that, then we should probably do it the proper way as opposed to this kind of way where it comes in front of us and it's being amended on the fly. Um, and I, I would say we should have the staff do their work. Having said all that, I may well, and I'm going to decide in the next 30 seconds, because what really Councillor Shiner is saying is let's include these other companies as comparators, among others. So he's not even directing through the motion uh, what, uh, you know, who should, be at, who should be included on the list. But I really wanted to emphasize two things. Yes, it is the past, and Councillor Mamaliti is right. The consideration of how these things are done and how much is paid and who gets paid what, I think those things have changed a little bit as we've had to be more respectful of uh, current circumstances in the world at large and hydro bills and all the rest, not that this affects hydro bills. Secondly, I wanted to make sure I made the point about the integrity of the board, including council directors who've been over there doing a good job for us. And thirdly, that we should let our staff do their work when we ask them and respect fiduciary obligations of the people over there who are on the board of directors, because that is a very important principle that should not be compromised. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So we have Councillor Shiner's motion on the screen, which he has reworded from from the original one. So it's on the screen. There's been a request for recorded vote. Councillor Peruzza, please. The amendment carries 33 to 4. Okay. Item as amended, on favor, carry. Okay, before we recess, um, we have one member's motion that we should introduce before we break for lunch. Councillor Troisi. If I could introduce the motion. Yes. So this way it can be circulated. It's right there, and the city solicitor has um, been working on this motion. Okay. You yes. want to just yeah. uh, yes, the motion is urgent as this matter is currently before the local planning appeal tribunal, and the city solicitor requires further direction. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. On favor, carried. We'll recess to two o'clock.